to the holiday class of 2011. I cannot believe it's been that many years since we started. I think we started our first one in 2004 with a recipe contest. And we've been doing them every, the contest every other year. And then on the off years, I get to cook some fun things that, you know, I learn about. But um, last year in November, I was asked to speak at um, Canton First, First Baptist Church of Canton at their women's ministry and their theme for the year was rooms of their house and they kind of put um, a theme with that room like the kids room was parenting and what whatnot but um, they gave me of all things the kitchen and um, the the complimentary character thing that was supposed to go with it was hospitality and so I thought well I can do that I, I I've got this you know and so it clipped along they asked me way back in August to speak in November and it was right before Thanksgiving and so as I you know, I would think about, okay, what do I want to share? And I honestly thought that I was going to share just very, very practical tips. You know, things like um, keep it simple. If it involves, and you know, if it involves a meal, keep it simple. Remember, the whole reason you're having guests over and being hospitable is to fellowship. It's not to just spend all your time cooking. And if you never sit down, it makes everyone around you feel kind of uncomfortable, and they're like feeling like they need to do something to help. Remember the story of Mary and Martha. She was so busy preparing the meal for Jesus that she never sat down at his feet and learned from him and fellowshiped with him. And so that's what entertaining and reaching out to others and being hospitable. Is all about is fellowshipping, right? So I thought I would share that. And then I thought, you know, another tip is to try to draw your guests in. You know, don't be just running around, especially if it's a big event, um, like a party or something like that. Go around and socialize with other people if you're the host or hostess. Um, I think one of the happiest days of my life, or several of the happiest days of my life now that I have more than one married child, is at my children's wedding, my daughter's wedding, my son's wedding. I, I love just I love having a party and I love making food I I've catered some weddings and didn't cater others others I just wrote the check on but um that was hard but anyway um we did make the bread we said no we can't have white bread at my daughter's wedding. just can't happen but anyway but I I loved it I loved going around to the table to table and talking to people drawing them in making them feel welcome and comfortable and that's what entertaining and being hospitable is all about also, I thought about sharing, entertain with a purpose. None of us sitting in this room, I know that I'm busy and I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you that I'm more busy than you are. We're all busy. We don't need another event to go to, you know, just an, a, a pointless party. So make your, your events purposeful. I even do that with the cooking classes. Every cooking class, I have a theme, I have a purpose, and then the Lord, usually I pray, I ask God to give me a word of encouragement. I just want it to have a purpose and a meaning and be encouraging and uplifting and fellowshipping to everyone that attends. So I thought about, you know, sharing that. Um, and, you know, that doesn't mean you have to make every dinner party or party, you know, a church service. You don't have to do that. But you at least want it to have some meaning that people just go, oh, I've got to go to this party and I really don't want to go. Make it have a meaning. Make it have a purpose. In fact, the Jewish um, uh, faith has a custom of, you know, their Sabbath day. They take very, very seriously. And they bring all their family. Their children come back and they meet in, this, in their homes. A lot of them do. And the whole purpose of that is to fellowship and have dinner together. And then the mother and father pray a blessing over their children. It's to pray and bless them. You know, what if we started fellowshipping like that? Or bringing our kids, you know, when you go out to lunch after church, you know, pray a blessing on others. So make the events meaningful. Um, I found when I was preparing for um, the, the speaking engagement on hospitality, I found a quote in a book called Still Living by Faith by Annie Mae Lewis. And she writes, entertaining says, I want to impress you with my beautiful home, my clever decorating, and my gourmet cooking. But hospitality says, this is not mine. It's a gift from God, and I'll use it as he desires. That's the difference. It's not to say that you can't decorate and can't make a gourmet meal. I like to do that. They're helping me get pretty, but um, I don't normally do pretty food. I just do good food. But anyway, and it can be pretty and good, but I, I'm learning that. Um, so, you know, that, but... It, it, again, like I said, it needs to have a purpose. As I continued praying, though, and as the days kind of got closer when I was going to share, I decided to do a little research in the Bible and see what if the Bible had anything to say about hospitality. 
oh my goodness, the whole message took a totally different turn. I decided I didn't know if I wanted to be so practical after all, but I shared the practical tips anyway. But hospitality has a deep, deep spiritual meaning. I began to find that when people entertained in the Bible, when they shared their home or shared their food, there was usually a miracle attached to it. In Genesis chapter 18, Abraham prepared, prepared food for the angels. And um, his motive was to refresh them from their journey or as they went on their way. His reward was that Sarah was going to have a baby. Um, Joshua chapter 2, Rahab, the harlot, opens her home to the spies when they were spying out the land and protects them from being killed by the king and by the people in that land. And because of that, her and her whole family were saved and came to know Jesus or came to know the Lord. Um, that was before Jesus. The Gospel of John, the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well where Jesus stops at the well and asks her to give him a drink. She shares a drink with Jesus. He talks to her. He, she fellowships with him. And she and her whole family and her whole community is saved because of her stopping and being willing to share that drink with Jesus. In Kings chapter 17, a widow shares her last meal with the prophet Elisha. He asked her to make him some bread, and she says, you know what, I'm gathering sticks right now. I only got this much flour at home for one loaf. I'm going to go make that, and then my son and I are just going to die. And he says, you know what, make me a loaf of bread. And so she does. Even though she's poor, she makes him a loaf of bread. Of course, that's the story where he tells her to go gather all the oil. Do you know that story? Get all the pots from everybody in the neighborhood and fill them with oil, and the oil never runs out. And so she does that. In 2 Kings chapter 4, and I thought this was interesting because in 1 Kings, that story was the prophet Elisha, and that was a very poor woman. But in 2 Kings chapter 4, Elisha is the prophet now that has taken over for Elijah, and uh, he's traveling around, and a very wealthy and influential woman says, you know, invites him into her home to share a meal. And after that, every time he came through their town, she shared a meal with him. And eventually, she even um, built a room under her house so that he would have a place to stay. And then, so Elijah was, Elisha was so blessed by this, he asked her, what can I give you? What can I do for you? And I love what she says. She says, I do not need anything. I live among my people. I am very, very happy. And um, Elisha finds out that she does not have any children, has never been able to have any, and he prays, and she becomes pregnant. I did learn one thing. Share your food with other people, the way um, being obedient to God, hmm, you might get pregnant. So you might want to think about that one. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's in there several times. It's usually babies involved. So if you don't want to have, no, okay, on a lighter note. So, um, but anyway, she finds that she can have no children, and he prays, and she gets pregnant. And then later the child grows up and gets sick. I don't know if you know this story. He gets a headache out in the field working with his father, and he dies. And sh she calls for the prophet and said, why did you do this to me? You know, why did you give me this child and now to take him away? And Elisha takes him up to his room, lays on breeze into him, and he comes back to life. So um, these are all results, and there's more. I mean, you all know the story of feeding the 5,000. I mean, there's more and more. Those were just a few of sharing your food um, with others. I hope you're beginning to see a pattern here that sharing what we have with others as God leads brings supernatural results and rewards. In the New Testament, Scripture revealed even more profound things. Hospitality is not just a spiritual gift. How many of y'all have heard that? People say, I have the gift of hospitality. That's great, and I know there are people that really, really do excel at it, but I actually found a scripture, and it's a command, <laughs> and it involves reaching out to others. In Romans chapter 12, verses 13, verse 13, it says this, and it doesn't say if you have this gift or those of you that have this gift. This is what it says. It says, contribute to the needs of God's people sharing in the necessities of the saints, pursue the practice of hospitality. Now, it sounds like that we're supposed to fellowship with believers, and that is correct. But when I got to looking up what hospitality really means, there's actually two commands here in this verse. It's saying fellowship with the saints, fellowship with fellow believers, but practice hospitality. That word hospitality comes from a Greek word, which means to entertain strangers. These are people you do not know. And to reach out to them. To be fond of guests. Even Webster's Dictionary says to receive and entertain strangers with kindness and without reward. Proceeding from or indicating kindness 
inviting to strangers. It has to do with strangers. I even found out that the word hospital, did you ever think about this, comes from the same root word. That's because back in the day, hospitals were for those who did not have family. It was for the poor. It was for the strangers. It was for the people that had no one. Because doctors used to come to your home. If you were sick, you remember the stories where Jesus went into the people's home and healed them. Doctors came to your home. But the poor, the paupers, the people that had no families, these hospitals were built so that, that they could get um, medical attention and medical care there. A little different than what our hospitals are today. So um, I recently did a class on comfort food, and I did a little research on what comfort meant. You know, all of us, especially this time of year, we all have foods, don't you? I mean, there's just something about there's certain foods that you're going to make at Thanksgiving and Christmas time, and they just bring back memories. Or uh, someone came in right before Thanksgiving and said, I made my dressing for Thanksgiving, and it just for a moment, my house smelled like my mom's, you know, and his mom had passed away. Don't y'all have things like that? And those are called comfort foods. Well, I looked up that word. I, you can tell I like to look up meanings of words. But um, that word comes from a Latin root, con means with, and fortis means strength. So a comfort food strengthens you. It gives you strength. It's invigorating. Webster's even says it means to strengthen, to invigorate, to cheer, or to enliven. To strengthen the mind when it's depressed or enfeebled. In that, you kind of just like, I just want a warm cup of hot chocolate or just a little peppermint candy. That reminds me of my grandfather or butterscotch, the butterscotch. My grandfather always had a bowl of those hard butterscotch candies. And whenever I smell it, I think of my grandfather. And um, it invigorates us. It strengthens us. It encourages us. It helps us when we're depressed and down. In um, Matthew chapter 15, Jesus feeds 5,000. There's a couple of accounts of Jesus feeding the multitudes. And the account says they were in a remote place and they had been there for several days. His disciples came to Jesus and said, send them away so they can get food. But 15, 13, Matthew 15, 13, Jesus said to his disciples, I have pity and sympathy for them, for I am deeply moved for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and they have nothing at all left to eat. And I am not willing to send them away hungry, lest they faint or become exhausted on the way. Jesus, though, does not say to them, tell them to sit down, I'll feed them. He says, you feed them. I'm going to show you what to do, but tell them to sit down and you'll watch. Give me what you have. And um, I always think the big miracle here was not that Jesus multiplied the bread and the, the fish, but that that little boy was willing to give up his bread and his fish. That was a miracle to me. <laughs> and then we want to hold up. That's my lunch. How am I giving you my lunch? I've been here three days too. My mom made me this lunch. But, um, but you see, see again a picture. If we will give to God, he will multiply. Don't ever think you don't have anything to give. The poor woman and the rich woman alike had something to give, and they had miracles um, miracles uh, in spite of it all. So um, my, my goal tonight is that I want you to fall in love with your kitchen. Now, you might have to find it. It's there. It really, really is. Some, I, I always get tickled when people say, I don't cook. And I'm like, it's there. It's not just the hall. It is there. It doesn't just catch all, everything. But I want you to, I want your kitchen and your family table and your family room to become not a place of drudgery. That's what, that's what I get excited because I want to share with you fun things to cook that your family's going to love. And I, I want that because I think that's what our home should, should be and our kitchen. As you see, when you share a meal, expect a miracle because it's going to happen. And I think we go from one extreme to the other. We, we get so tired of hearing What's for dinner? And um, so we, we get into the habit of just open a can, stick it in the microwave, throw it on the table, here it is, or pull through the drive through whatever. Or the other extreme thinking that we've got to have this gourmet, lavish, everything has to be beautiful. And like I said, they're helping me with that, and there's a time and place for that. But sometimes it's here's the mashed potatoes right out of the pressure cooker, have at it, you know. Um, but then there's, so we, we can get all ensnared by all this, kind of like Mary. Then there's putting it on the table, taking it off the table, cleaning the dirty dishes, getting up in the morning and finding the sink full of dishes that you wash. You're like, I did the dishes before I went to bed. What is all this? So all these things. So my goal today is to help you fall in love with your kitchen, and I want you to see that your kitchen is a place of honor and can actually be a mission field. And we'll I'll close out with that thought. So I want to leave you with that for a few minutes. 
Um, but just know that by the end of tonight, you're going to have a whole new picture or uh, appreciation for your kitchen and your home and what it can do and be to others. So I want to pray, and then we're going to get started. We're going to smoke some turkey and chicken, first thing. And then we're going to start making, I'm going to demonstrate how to make some of the foods that you had tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. I just thank you for the privilege and opportunity of sharing the good things that you have shown me with others. Lord, I pray a blessing on everyone here tonight that you would encourage them, strengthen them, and give them hearts that want to reach beyond themselves and reach out to not only the people they know and fellowship with, but to strangers, Lord. Give us sensitive spirits that we can share the good news that we have both physically and spiritually with other people. Thank you for this time. Bless this time that we have now tonight together. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm going to call my main man up here. <laughs> Brad's going to come. Oh, come on, come on. I got to tell you. Ah, oh, you do too. Um, I got to tell you, first thing we're going to do, how many of y'all were in the Thanksgiving class? You remember the smoked turkey? Well, I just thought we got to smoke another one for Christmas. So um, my kids say, oh, Mom, you're always smoking something. But I'm like, <laughs> well, anyway, we're going to smoke some turkey. Um, this is our Ryan smoker that we just had to carry. Brad and I were, um, went to his favorite store, the Bass Pro Shop. And uh, we saw them there. And we went, wow, hmm, we really like that. So we bought one. And we smoked all kinds of things for family gatherings. Because when our family gets together, there's at least 21 people just my children and us and grandchildren and grandparents. And uh, so we smoked, we smoked ribs, we smoked turkey, we smoked a whole turkey, we smoked uh, brisket, all kinds of things. And we ended up buying another one because there were times when there was so many people that we had to have two. So um, this summer I started going, calling the Orion people and said, I really want this smoker. It is so wonderful. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I did Okay. Oh, okay. Um, they're giving me sign language back there, but they weren't talking to me. So anyway, um, so I just, we fell in love with this smoker. It's a set it and forget it kind of thing. And Brad is going to demonstrate now um, what you do. Do you need a microphone? Here, hang on. I've got it for you. Okay. We can be attached. <laughs> don't, just don't even go there. Just, go, go ahead. Ah, Real quick. Ah, ah. Real quick. You're going to do a whole turkey? Then just... Put it on that thing. This is what you pull it out with. Okay? Just showing you that. Sells for $149. Great manly kind of gift. Great for the family that has everything. These are the rib racks. Each one of them holds two racks of ribs. So you can smoke, yes, six racks of ribs at one time. Now, what we're going to do, yeah. First, I'm going to take the drip pan. i got to get up on the ladder. Because Jim is trying to film this so you can see. Can you see why? Yes, you can. Now, notice this has been used numerous this times. It's not going to stay pretty like that. I'm sorry, yeah, but it, you won't worry about it, I promise. We're going to put this down in the center and center it up there. Okay. And then I've got to get the wood chips. Hurry back. Everything is absolutely outstanding in this thing. Anybody have one? Where's, where's, uh, yes, you love it? Yep, yep. It is really, really effortless once you load the meat in there. Well, he'll show you, but we're going to put the charcoal briquettes around here. You light it, and you walk away, and you come back in the designated amount of time. The uh, owner's manual tells you how long, how much meat you're cooking. And um, just absolutely phenomenal. Every major family gathering that we have, we smoke something in this. Uh, we've done whole turkey bone in. Um, we've done turkey breast. Like I said, we've done brisket. We've done ribs. It went camping with us. I mean, we really, it's just, it's just a phenomenal thing. It gets the cooking out of your house in the summertime, um, 4th of July celebration. But even at Christmas, when you're cooking everything in the oven, it, it, and it's really effortless. So he's just putting these chips. It's a little more. Oh, sorry. Effort. It's a I'm little more effort when you're standing on a ladder trying to do it, though. Yeah, it's not at all difficult. You're gonna put this outside. You don't want to fire it up inside. So that's what. While well, we're gonna load it, and then he's gonna have to take it out the back door. If at any point you wanna go out the back door, just kind of motion to someone that you really, really 
want to go outside. see it. You want to go outside. You need to go outside. Whoops. All right. So that is the Orion smoker. Like I said, for the man who has everything, shoo we. He will love you forever. Or your parents or something. You know, there's just people in your life. Okay, something's not liking my microphone here. All right, you ready? Still putting the whip tips around. It's hard to do it on a ladder. Yeah. Don't want wood chips in the drip pan. No, that's the drip pan. Makes great gravy. Oh, the gravy is incredible. Yeah, you have, you have, it's very, very concentrated, and you have to um, thin it out with a little, little broth there, but it's really, really delicious. So we're going to get this loaded up. Yeah, I should have done this before. Yes, you should have. You told me not to. Just like that. Okay. And you can get. can see what I'm doing because I can't. All right. I don't want anybody to get any hickory chips in their gravy. All right. What I've done is I've done half hickory and half mesquite. I just did it that way one time and it was great. And we've been doing it that way ever since. It comes with these racks and you just put them in. Do you have the chicken over here, the turkey? Is right. Oh. I feel like a little trusted assistant here. All right. We can do three levels on this. Now, the, the secret to good um, poultry is um, brining it, rubbing it with some salt, let it sit in about an hour, uh, about overnight is best. You can do a dry salt rub or you can do a salt brine um, where you m dissolve some salt in water and let it actually um, sit in the water. Then what I've rubbed it with is um, the roasted red pepper dip mix. I don't know if y'all have tried any of those dip mixes that we sell. The roasted red pepper is one that I keep on hand at all times. I love it, love it for rubbing um, chicken, turkey, or poultry of any kind. Really, really like it. Give me that last one if you would. Okay. Please. Sure, I feel like Vanna White. Uh, don't say it. I know I don't look like her. Well, you're not blonde. That was a good save. I may be slow, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> Do you want me to get some of this good gooky stuff? I do. All right. If you ain't got the motion, you'll never get it right. Okay. Is that the free one? Is that the free? Okay. Then you put the lid on. And because the, the charcoal is a little dirty, or, you know, it can be messy instead of getting it all over my counter, um, you buy the instant light charcoal, and he's going to put all, uh, 15 pounds for this much. When you're doing smaller amounts, you use smaller amount of charcoal. But you'll put the charcoal, all except 12 briquettes, will go right up here in the top. And the, it is the instant light, but it doesn't come in contact with the food in any way. It's just That's just the easiest way. So he literally is going to fill it up, light it. I'm going to put 12 briquettes in the top, the rest of them down here. Light both of them. What that's going to do is create a convection action inside. And it's just the heat is going to heat up the wood chips that are around the drip pan, and they're just going to smolder in there. This is incredible. You're going to love it. When you taste it, you're going to love it. All right. So that's Brad's project for the night. OK. Now we're ready. How long will that take to cook? Well, it's 11 or 12 pounds, somewhere there, but since we cut it in some chunks, um, it's, so they're about five, four, four pounds each, um, we're going to try, we're going to check it at about 45 minutes. Um, if we had left it whole, um, it's, it's about an hour and 15 minutes. Seven minutes per pound is about what it is. And like the turkey we did at Thanksgiving was a 21 pound turkey and we did it for two hours. I forgot so. to tell everybody, you start timing it, Light the charcoal. Yeah, as soon as you light it, you start timing it. 
So you don't have to sit there and wait for it to heat up. You literally light it and walk away. And it's, it just does its thing. You don't have to go back and make sure it's a certain temperature and check on everything. You just light it and forget it. Like I said, the only thing is he'll check it a little bit because we do have it cut in chunks and we don't want to overcook it. Of course, we don't want to undercook it either. But that's the Orion Smoker. Great gift idea. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Our, oh, it, you don't even have to put a cover over it. I mean, ours just sits outside. We've left it outside for days. You know, just if you clean it out, you, if the charcoal and all gets wet, it's a little messy if, you know, if it rains. It. Oh, it, you're not going to hurt it. It stays outside. It stays outside. It can get rained on everything. So, all right. Then, um, now, for, I, you can tell, I love smoked foods, <laughs> but um, I always hate all the chemicals that are in the smoked foods that you buy in the store. And we actually fell in love with smoked foods when we went to Latvia. And so we found this little stovetop smoker when we came back. So for doing things inside and smaller amounts, like for dinner for my just my kids that are at home, um, you can't beat the um, Cameron stovetop smoker. It's not magnetic, so I can't cook it on my induction burners, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to use it on my little butane burner here, which, by the way, this is another nice gift. If you've got campers that you're buying for or emergency preparedness people, this is $23.99. comes with its own carrying case. It's a little stove, and you can get the refillable butane, or not refillable, but the replaceable replacement butane bur um, cans, you can just get them at Walmart anywhere. It doesn't have to have this brand. I mean, we sell them, but you can buy them anywhere, Walmart, Kmart, Target, anywhere for the can. So you just fasten that in. Yep. And now, is that close enough? And now um, I'm going to get my Cameron smoker. This is all stainless steel. This is our stovetop smoker. I believe, Ashley, do they sell for like $49.95? Great, again, great gift for a couple of, of my sister-in-law bought, when she, just after she started working here, she bought one for her husband for Father's Day or his birthday, and he absolutely loves it. It's got um, a drip pan, the rack, basically just like the big one, except this one you can cook right in your kitchen. We're going to close it down. It won't leak smoke out or anything into the room. It'll go, you can put it in your oven. You can put it on gas, electric, um, campfire, grill. It can go anywhere. It's all stainless steel. And all you're going to have to do here is it comes with four little containers of wood chips is what it's packed with. They're little half or little two ounce containers, I think. Um, I think it comes with hickory, alder, okay, hickory and cherry, I don't know, but anyway, it, it's out there, but we sell other, other flavors, I particularly like mesquite, I just really do, you don't want to get heavy handed with mesquite, but all you're going to do is put about a tablespoon of the chips, these are not soaked in chemicals, it's just mesquite wood, so um, that's the difference in smoked things that you buy in the store. So you just put one little tablespoon right in the center, or some, some of the chips it calls for two. The, the owner's manual tells you how to do it. You're just gonna, and you just leave it in a mound. You don't sprinkle it out. Then you're gonna just put your um, drip tray and your rack, and then these are chicken breasts, boneless chicken breasts that I have rubbed with the roasted red pepper. I'm just gonna lay them in here. And these, these were so big, I, I cut them, I did slice them in half so they would cook a little more quickly. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I do. That's the secret because um, especially the seasoning mixes that we sell that I love so much to do as a rub on, on the chicken and things like that doesn't have any salt in it. So you always, that's the key to getting tasty chicken and, and poultry is to rub them with some salt. Now, Caleb, I think, actually put the salt in the, um, he just put some salt in the rub when he was rubbing it. But um, I know my turkey at Thanksgiving, I actually brined it, put it down in um, salt water and let it sit. <laughs> oh. Yeah, if you want to see it, go ahead. 
All right, so this will this will hold about um, eight nice size breasts. This was um, this was I had twelve chicken breasts and I cut them in half. Um, so now I'm gonna uh, finish those up. I love my GSE. I keep it by my sink when I've been handling poultry. That's the grapefruit seed extract. It's a natural antibiotic. Studies at the University of Georgia found that it was more effective than chlorine for disinfecting their meat counters and stuff. So I just keep mine in my windowsill and wash my hands and my cutting boards after I've been handling chicken or meat or whatever. It's also great, great for cold and flu season. <laughs> to um, take it, you can take it in a little orange juice or whatever for your sore throats and your colds. Which, by the way, I want to tell you, they, we now carry a whole line of their products by Nutribiotics. The throat spray is unbelievable it's it's almost miraculous because it's not it does have the numbing stuff you know like the junk you buy in the store that's just numbing but it actually has some grapefruit seed extract and some other things and I had a sore throat and a bad flu had been going around and I sprayed it and within an hour my sore throat was gone and I didn't have any it didn't bother me again I think Judith has a testimony too because she was struggling with a sore throat okay so now we've got our meat loaded in here you can do wings, you can do meatloaf, is excellent, smoked. Um, you can um, take the rack out and sit glass dish in there, and you can smoke cheese, you can smoke almonds, you can do whatever. It's very, very versatile um, smoker. So now we're going to just slide the cover on, and you want to leave it just partially cracked. I don't know if you can tell there. I've got just a little crack here, and I'm going to lock my butane into place. And I'm going to start it. And then what we're going to do, I'll just set it off to the side here. What we want to do is you want to start it on kind of medium high on your burner. And then when you see the first whiff of smoke, you're going to shut the lid completely tight. But that just lets you know that it's started smoking. And you'll shut the lid down. And then you'll turn it to kind of medium, maybe medium low, just depending on, on your burner and how hot they run. So I'll just scoot it aside here so that you all can see it um, when it starts smoking, So that, but we can go on to other things. I did. Mm -hmm. Yep, both of them have new cans. So where's Ashley? <laughs> all right, you ready? Um, we have some really, really exciting door prizes for tonight. Did everyone get a ticket when you came in, the free one? Okay. No? Okay, the red one? Okay. Um, Ashley, we have a few people that did not. And um, I got a phone call from Caleb one day last week, and he said, well, Aunt Karen, that's his Aunt Karen, Karen that runs, her, runs the store out there. Um, this is Ashley, my daughter. Um, who needs raffle tickets? But a um, couple of them here came up with this brilliant idea. Um, you know, I've started the nonprofit ministry, Real Bread Outreach, and that's, to, that's who's giving you the gifts tonight. And, um, but it's to take bread and um, real food to strangers, <laughs> to the elderly, to children, to the poor, to those that cannot afford, literally, truly cannot afford. We have even give grain mills or whatever if they truly cannot afford it and if they're willing to make it. So that's what Real Bread Outreach is for. Okay, it's already smoking. So now all I'm going to do, it's really not that hot. I can probably just do it with my hand. All I'm going to do is shut this completely down tight, and we're going to um, turn the heat down just to about medium. And then we're going to just let this smoke, and I'm going to set my timer. You got my, okay, you got a little timer over there. All right, so we're going to do it since we cut them in half. Let's do it about 20 minutes, and we'll check it. That many, it may take about 30, but um, I'm not real sure. Um, but anyway... So they came up, uh, we thought we'd have a little bit of a fundraiser for Real Bread Outreach. Uh, we did two, 1,600 dinner rolls for Thanksgiving for a Feed the um, Shut-In program. Anyway, we do lots of things, and uh, we really don't have a fundraiser. We're also busy doing stuff, but we have the bottled water back there. If at any time you're thirsty and you want to give a donation, you want to get a whole bottle of water, um, that would be great. But a couple of the employees came up with this idea that we should raffle off Caleb and I. Um, so that's <laughs> not like, to, oh, Caleb, woohoo. Oh, that's what, we need that. 
Will you go get the ones out there? I forgot to. I know, I know, I forgot to do that. I thought that was your job. <laughs> Remember I said, you're in charge of the drawing. Get on it, chop, chop. Bring me a cozy and the, and the um, it's really too hot for a cozy tonight. Um, anyway, um, where was I? Um, anyway, okay, so we're auctioning Caleb and I off. Here's what we did. Caleb and I actually had this thought uh, back, oh, six or eight months ago, but we just never did anything about it. So now we're going to try it out on you for the lucky winner that wants to buy it. So for $10, you can buy a raffle ticket. You can buy multiple raffle tickets if you want. And what we were thinking is dinner for six. Um, dinner and a cooking class for six. We have some beautiful, some nice bar stools that we're going to put here at the counter. And Caleb and I will cook you a meal for you and five other guests. We'll kind of do a little private cooking class, we'll, but it, and it'll be meal size. It won't just be, you know, little tasting samples. Okay, we'll actually make you a meal for six. And the proceeds to that will go to Real Bread Outreach. So buy several more raffle tickets if you want. Um, it's going to a good cause write a check we can take a credit card we can take cash always so um, anyway we love to do that for you so Caleb and I are just real excited we will probably give you a selection of different menus here she is so anyway oh uh, well we'll talk about the cozy later but um anyway do you want to give away something do you want to have a drawing while I get out my crate making yes let's remember we, we talked about this great plan. We're going to have a drawing every time I change to a new recipe, so that'll give me time to, um, I already have one, to uh, move on and clean up, whatever. What do you want to give away, Mom? Um, well, we're actually going to start with the crates. Well, why don't you just give away something fun down there? Maybe give the vermints or, oh, the, oh give me those chocolate peanut butter cups. These are all, all organic, all natural chocolate peanut butter cups. We got a jo dark chocolate and a milk chocolate. They're sweetened with evaporated cane juice. We were riding along the other day, and I actually had to stop by here. My 15-year-old was not happy because she was coming home from dance and had been at dance rehearsing all day. She was like, Rrr, basically, Rrr. she was being a total whiny butt because that's what the baby Did is you? good for doing. Ah. And so I snagged up one of these as I was hopping in the car. So I said, here, you want, there's two, just like, you know, the name brand one out there. There's two in each little package. And she said, oh, yeah, does this really taste like a Reese's peanut butter cup? And I'm like, she goes, oh, whatever. Oh, did I just say the brand? Oh, well, anyway. Um, so I said, well, if you don't want it, fine, I'll eat it. She goes, no, I'll try it, you know. <laughs> and, and you should have seen her all of a sudden. She goes, oh, oh, wow. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Wow. So anyway, they're delicious. They taste like, well, these are the real thing. The other thing, they actually taste better. But um, anyway, great stocking, stocking, stocking stuffer. stuffer. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. we have, um, we're going to give away, one's a dark chocolate, one's a milk chocolate. Okay. Dark chocolate's going to 562. 562. Where are you, 562? Right there. All, All right. right. Did you just get the ticket? <laughs> yes. And I did oh, mix right. it up. Did y'all see me? I was mixing it up. Okay. Right. And then the other one is going to 469. Ooh. All right. Ooh. You Ooh. love it. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. By popular demand. Hey, Brad, can you come do something for me? Can you clean up your mess? You left your paraphernalia down there on the floor. Okay. <laughs> that did not sound good. All righty. Okay. Um, had several people ask me would I redo um, or would I demonstrate crepes in this class? How many of y'all, anybody here came to the crepe class? It was wonderful, wasn't it? Um, well, so I thought I'm not going to redo the whole crepe class because I didn't want to turn this into that. But, um, hey, actually, Ashley, would you ask Karen to please make sure she runs some copies of the crate class handout for those that might be interested. So what I did think that um, I, I have fallen in love with crates, that I would at least demonstrate the crate maker for you. Um, Caleb, 
I'm missing the little the little bowl for the crepe batter. Um, but anyway, crepes are basically an egg-based pancake, and they have no leavening. They don't have any baking powder, or baking soda. They're but they're a very light, thin. Hmm? Uh, I need the the pan for the crepe maker. You know the little dish. Um, but that's, that's what a crepe is. And they were actually first served or kind of invented or whatever you want to call it in France. And um, they're just a thin little eggless pancake. And it was interesting because they were originally made out of buckwheat flour. And so this is a nice uh, pancake kind of substitute or a little substitute for, you can do a lot of things with crepes that is gluten free. So, um, and I, now you can't get around the eggs because it's an egg-based pancake, but I think you certainly could use other type of milk, your alternative milks, if you had a dairy allergy. So, um, this is made with buckwheat. If you go online, you'll see all kinds of crepe recipes, batters, and they pretty much are, they're basically the same. Some say mix the flour, dump the liquids in. Some say do the liquids, dump the flour in. I did it several ways, and I didn't really see that big a difference. I kind of gravitated towards doing the eggs, the milk, the salt, the liquids, and then whisking um, the flour in. And I kind of like that. You want the texture of your crepe batter to be about like the thickness of whipping cream. The buckwheat recipe is in your handout if you want to turn there. I think it's on the second page. Is it on the second page or the third page? Okay, third page. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the crepes because he's got to build what I'm going to um, do for you. And then we'll go back to the beginning and we're just going to go straight through the handout. And that's how I'm going to do the rest of the recipes. But because of the, um, what we're going to do with these, I needed to do it this way. Are we getting me the pan? All right, there you go. Um, this is our new crepe maker. We started carrying it, I guess, in the summertime maybe. Um, and at first, Caleb and I both were kind of like, eh, whatever, you know, because you can make crepes in a skillet. You just use a couple of tablespoons of the batter and you, twer you know, uh, turn it so it spreads out. But he made 60 crepes yesterday and he had two of them going and he, 75, and he, um, he liked it. And after we used it, even back when we were doing the class and we used it several times, it was really nice. Um, it's just, it's just it's kind of a no-brainer. It does everything for you. So um, you're gonna. It comes with its own um, electrical little plate here. It can go anywhere. You don't have to find the place for it to go. You turn it on. When the light goes out, it's hot enough. And so um, all I'm gonna do is put a little bit of this batter here in the pan. Well, you, you can put, all, if it'll hold it, you can put all of it in there. And this is made with buckwheat for anyone that has wheat allergies. And now with my um, crepe maker hot enough, you're going, you want to turn it upside down and put it in the top of the batter. And I kind of give it a little swirl and then lift it and it's coated. And now you just put it back on the plate on the hot plate and the light will come on when it's ready. I mean you can't get any better than that. So um, it, and it really doesn't take a long time. It'll just kind of dry out here. And the nice thing about crepes is you can make a lot ahead of time and I've even used them in place of tortillas. The same type of thing. I had some mixture left over one night where we had had tortillas and I was making the crepes and I just um, rolled it in there. You can go sweet, you can go savory. In the cooking class, we did a chicken filled, um, chicken ricotta filling um, with asparagus cream sauce over the top. Absolutely delicious. Um, crepes store beautifully in the refrigerator and then, and you don't even have to put wax paper between them. They're not, they seem like they'd be real delicate and sticky, but they're really not. Um, and then you can, so you can make a lot ahead. You just need to let them kind of come up to room temperature before you, um, you know what? I can't see my light. I got so much light going on here. I think they're ready. I can't, the light's so bright I can't see the light. Boop. There you go. That's your crepe. So all you do is just, and you don't have to put it back on the crepe maker 
to let it heat up, um, heat up again. Okay. Um, so fabulous. I think they're $49. You'll love it. And if you have them on hand, you can make a really, really nice, seemingly elegant dessert for surprise company or if you just want, you know, um, a little sweet something after dinner. You can do all kinds of things with these. From uh, I, I think in the crepe class I did blintzes where I, I made a ricotta and lemon uh, zest and a little lemon flavoring in there. Um, filling, rolled it up in it, and now those, once I enclosed it, I actually refried them in a little bit of butter and then served them with a plum sauce. Outstanding. Like I said, the chicken ricotta and asparagus cream sauce. What I'm going to do for you tonight is just a really, really simple um, filling that just to show you how easy it is to um, to use your crepes. Okay, so there you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some almond whipped cream. We're going to try our whipped cream maker here again. Mark's like maybe I should have sat on a. Well, you sat far enough over. Yes, sir. Crate makers are $39. 30 what? 38. Something like that. Okay. Um, this is our whipped cream maker. I'm going to put a pint of whipping cream in here. Okay. Would anyone like to come up and try it? Whoops, that stuck. You want to make sure you don't get it too far on the edge. Um, would anybody like to come try it? You're welcome to if you want. Come on, Kathy. I can tell you want. Okay. All right. You can't. Anybody want to before I put another one? Okay, come on. Come on. You can. Come on. All right. So all you want to do is you just want to turn it totally straight over and then just kind of swirl it around just and make sure it goes all the way. There you go. Now, and then just pick it up. There you go. Put it on. You did great. That easy. All right. And I just, yep, it's still smoking. Just wanted to make sure I hadn't turned it down too far. Okay, as soon as that finishes cooking. And it, see, it'll look kind of dry out. Can you see it? Is it, is it on? I think it's on. Okay, that means it's done. So you're just going to turn it over and just kind of, it actually comes with a little spatula, but I found it's just as easy to just grab the little side with your, oh, you're a pro, I can tell. We should have had you here yesterday. There you go. There you go. Oh, it didn't all. That's okay. You can double dip. <laughs> it's the only place you're allowed to double dip. There you go. There you go. And kind of roll it just slightly. Not a lot. You don't want to like, I hesitated to tell people that. I'll show you with the next one or when Teresa does it. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're going to measure. Yeah, you're on candid camera. All right, so we're going to make our almond whipped cream. And you could do anything here. Lemon, cur oh, the lemon curd would be good in here. Did y'all like the lemon curd? Yes. That lemon curd is just good right out of the bowl, whatever. Oh, I need my almond extract. Okay, I think it's done. It's hard to see with the lights. It really, whoop, it's done. <laughs> All right. Now, what you what Caleb was saying is, if you turn it all the way and you kind of, kind of just just slightly to one side and then roll it like that and then lift it. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And then just kind of like that, just a little bit. There you go. And there you go. Oh, we didn't get it quite. Yes. Yeah, see, you just there you go. All right. Still didn't get it. All right. One side is one All right. That's good enough. It's good enough. And you can see if, if you miss a spot, you can just dip it back in. Um, it's just really not that difficult. Don't worry about getting these ultra thin crepes. The thinner your batter, the thinner your crepe will be. So if you want a little thinner batter or a little thinner crepe, but these are really these are really a nice. I mean, they're, they're a little thick here, but the buckwheat is a little thick like that. So that is a little thicker. These would be nice for your savory. These would be great for the chicken filling. Um, it's going to be a little thick for the 
the sweet one, but that's okay. So now I'm going to put a teaspoon of our almond extract. All of our extracts are organic and they're real, um, real extracts, not imitation. Do what? Uh huh. Just a minute. All right. So this is our whipped cream maker. I'm not going to shake it too much. I got a little carried away in the last class. Uh oh. Why? Come here. Oops. Okay, this is done. There we go. All right, that's all I'm going to make for you tonight. All right, so let's do our cartridge here. Okay, all I did was put my um, carbon. Is this nitrogen or carbon dioxide? Nitrogen cartridge. Put it in the little cap. Twist it. Okay, we just pressurize it. All right. All right, this is the one that does not have the seal on it correctly. Same thing it did the other one. I'm going to try that one. You think that's funny. Couldn't have happened to a nicer person. There's some in my hair. Have fun with that. We couldn't figure out which one was malfunctioning. I think the little ga the little the little tube is not in there right. If this one does it, I'm gonna just be really upset. <laughs> she was demonstrating um, the Bosch blender one time, like at a show or something like that, and oh, no. filled it all in up a, in a seminar oh, with over right. two hundred people. Yeah, and she's like making the smoothie and the blender and everything. And so then she goes to like twist it and pick it up off the thing, except the base on that blender comes off so that you can clean it. And so it wasn't completely on anymore. And when she twisted it, she picked it up and the whole smoothie goes whoosh, all over the table, all over the table. It was, well, that yeah. was nothing compared to the time she was on TV. Oh, that's right. That happened again on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks guys. Fantastic. <laughs> Maybe we ought to raffle off bloopers with Sue or something like that. Were you talking about hus hospitality or humility earlier? Which one was it? I can't remember. I'm not Just sure. keeping you humble, Mom. Yeah. Keeping you humble. All right. Well, we're going to try this again. I'm believing that that little something's not right in that one. <laughs> because I've never had it happen until Wednesday's class. It did that. It just started, the cream started coming out. Um, I think so. Um, okay. Where is, oh. All right, you be quiet. Uh, yes, just give me a minute here. All right, did I did I ever put this in? I didn't. Did I? In this one? All right. You sure? All right, I'm going to take your word for it. Now that I'm all greasy. All right, here we go. Almond extract. All right. Here we go. Maybe. No, I didn't do almond the other day. Because somebody was saying maybe it was the extract. It was the coffee extract. All right. I tell you what, I'm not shaking it this time. I love this thing. I use it all the time. Oh, is that what it is? I've never heard it hiss like that. Is it supposed to do that? All right. What's the timer for? Okay. Boy, I'm glad y'all came tonight. <laughs> How would I get all this done? Oh, I wouldn't be doing it, would I? All right. Is that chicken? That chicken. You need to check it. Just check it and see if it's um, done. Now that I've put my hands back in my hair. All right. Feel like I need a bath. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna just take off the cartridge. There we go. And put on the little, 
dispensing valve. Ow. See, that's what it's supposed to do. No issues. There's something wrong with that little valve over there. Mark this one, please. Label it for me. Okay. All right. So now, what we're going to do with our crepe, and this is just one way. I said you can literally just dust it with powdered sugar. You can put a little chocolate in there, whatever you want. You can just however you want. You can make it savory, sweet. If you're going to freeze them and store them for later or refrigerate them, just stack them up. You don't have to put paper between them. They slide it. Caleb, do you have your bags over there, or is he already taken them? Can you bring me one of the packages of the crepes? Yep. This is how Caleb just, he just put them on a paper plate and stuck them in a Ziploc bag. This is 20 crepes. And um, it's, it's best if you let them come to room temperature. But see, they'll just peel right up. They don't stick at all. So um, they're just very, very easy to have on hand. And like I said, you can just use them for all kinds of stuff. But what I thought I would do tonight is I would show you one of the things I did, just an easy little dessert, is I'm going to just start with putting some almond whipped cream. Then I'm going to layer some strawberries. I got a fork there. I was going to. Yep. Let's, I like a fork. The almond whipped cream is sweet. If your strawberries aren't real sweet and you want to sweeten them, um, that'll work. This is our agave chocolate syrup. It's agave nectar and cacao powder. Absolutely wonderful. Not too sweet. So now I'm going to just take my fork and I'm going to drizzle. What are y'all laughing at? What am I doing? You're what? You thought I was going to eat it? Oh, uh, well, I'd probably do that. Give me, give me a little more time. All right. And then there's several ways you can fold up a crepe. You can roll it. So if you want to roll it, just put the stuff down the middle and roll it like a tortilla. If you want to do a blintz, you're going to fold the edges in, roll it up so it's all enclosed, and then you can actually fry it so it's nice and kind of warm and crispy and got the nice filling and then put a plum sauce on it. But there's another um, way you can kind of fold it into triangles. So you just kind of fold it in half like that, and then you fold it in half again. And then there's your little dessert there. And that's actually um, quite a bit of crepe and so I'll just do a little strawberry here on top. And we'll just drizzle it with a little chocolate. Whoop, that was a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Who cares, huh? And you could do a little, little dot of whipped cream if you want. It's making me a little nervous. And then um, I powdered some sucanot or some honey granules and just a little, a little shake little shake of that. And there you go. Okay, so we're gonna, um, Caleb's gonna build these and serve these to y'all while we make some lemon rosemary scones. Save this one for me. No, I'm just kidding. I'll save it for you. I don't know what's going on with that thing. All right, so Ashley's gonna have a drawing. We're gonna um, give away a jar of the agave chocolate syrup this is great to have on hand for hot chocolate great stocking stuffer or just having around for just doing some fun desserts for whip uh, for ice cream topping it's it's healthy agave syrup do you have one okay we'll we'll grab one all right let me clean up while she does that Whoa. what happened um, you have to do it totally straight up. There you go. Okay. Ticket number 510. Hey, Brad. Yay, Teresa. Brad. All right, I'll get it for you. Right back there um, is a box. We're going to do a couple more because she's already talked about a few of these. And one of them is um, the dip mix that she used to rub the smoked chicken, the roasted red, the pepper spread. I'm going to raffle off one of these as well. Five, three, three. 
0533. Going once, going twice. 0533. Oh, yeah, I would bet so. We're going we're gonna to believe that that's what it is. So there you go. If you want to go ahead and talk about some other stocking stuffers and stuff, you can. Sure. Go ahead. Why don't you, sure. Ashley? Why don't I? I think that would be a great idea. Why don't I? Yes. Yes. Um, actually, I'm, um, hmm. Well, hmm. I've never been speechless before. It's kind it. of, I know. I come by it honestly. Okay, I'm sure. Hmm. Oh, I know what we could do. Okay. Um, these are our silicone popsicle makers. Jim's probably killing me back there because I'm moving all around and he can't catch I, up with I me I on the camera. Him. Okay, I can I stand him. right here? Do you want me just to stand right here? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, wait, let me get my good side. Okay. Um, you so have we one? have. Mm, anyway, we have these very cool silicone popsicle makers. So you just put your fruit juice Here's another in there, and then pop the cap on, and it stays sealed. And then you can lay them on their side, stand them up like this, whatever. You just throw them in your freezer, and they freeze. And then your kids just push them up and out. So. Um, we have four different colors. You can buy them individually, or um, we also have them in a four-pack like this. So if your um, kids are color-coded like mine are, <laughs> except I only have three. Um, and actually, those are my kids' colors. Like, they have certain plastic cups and plates and things like that that are their colors. Um, and so that's a really nice way. So um, if you have four children, you could get one for each of their stocking. Um, if you have more, well, then you're just going to have to double up on colors, I guess, or start switching around the tops and say, well, I've got the blue one with the red top or whatever. Um, we actually have mom and dad made our stockings years ago, crocheted them, um, had a pattern, like an octagon-shaped pattern that then they made, and then they stitched those together to make our Christmas stockings. So they totally started with you know, red, white, and green, and so I don't even remember what my color is. Like, the center is white, and then it's green, and then it's red, and all of them are like that, and that's my stocking, and then Caleb's, the center was green, and then red, and then white, and then Joshua's was the other, the third one. <clears throat> well, then, you know, they kept having them, <laughs> and then there's only three colors, so then eventually they had to add a fourth color in there to make it look different, and, and then they changed crochet hook at one point and so like the two youngest ones their stockings are like this big <laughs> yeah totally feeling the love okay so <laughs> hey well at least you got yours before you were even born i think they got them when they were three years old or something like that <laughs> how much are these 319 they're 319 a piece and yes. then the four pack oh i didn't check on that 11.99 there you go there they're you go they're fabulous and they were they remind me of the old push-up yeah. You know, the, the push-up, the ice cream man that used to come along and you got the orange push-up? 489. Who's that? 489. Yahoo! You may pick your color. All right, what am I doing? 529. 529. What color would you like? Red, yellow, blue? Will you pass that back to her, please? 528. Way in the back. All right, and then four nine zero. Okay, you got first. Blue, you get yellow. You're welcome. All right, now we're gonna do. Did I? Did my mic go out, or am I okay? All right, now we're gonna do the lemon rose, lemon rosemary scones. This is from the Ancient Grains for Modern Meals Cookbook by Maria Speck. I met her at the um, uh, Natural Products Expo in Baltimore this past September. Um, she had a book signing, and I bought the book and uh, had her sign. Or actually, they, I think they gave us the book. I love 
love, love this cookbook. I love her. She, we're having, we're going to have her come down next year, year. She's from Boston. She grew up with Greek mother, German father, grew up cooking lots, and she just discovered whole grains and like her family used to eat, kind of like Judith did with her heritage. Like, where's the food my my family used to cook? The whole book is whole grains. And um, I tell you what, you look at the pictures and you just, you know, I, I wrote her an email and uh, I actually wrote a review on Amazon and I said the only time I want to put the book down is to go try a recipe in it. I had a little sticky thing here with all the recipes that I wanted to try. I've tried several of them and um, I really, when I tried the lemon rosemary scones, I decided that's what I was doing for the Christmas class. Um, not thinking that I would have to do 110 scones. So that's what we've been doing since 2 o'clock this afternoon is making the scones. I don't think they're quite as good as they would be if you didn't make so many because just, you know, making them in that big. But when I made them, I've made them two or three times for my family with the lemon curd and the um, scone cream. I also took the recipe and added orange zest and cranberries instead of the lemon zest and the rosemary. Fabulous. They are the best scones um, that I have ever eaten. So I want to make the scones for you now. And there's a little trick to making scones and biscuits and pie crust and things like that. Um, you want to uh, mill your flour, of course, and then we're going to put our dry ingredients. So I'm going to do my baking powder. It's one and a half teaspoons. If y'all have never, how many of y'all have ever seen me use this thing? I love, love, love this measuring spoon. It's called the flipper. This end is one tablespoon. This end is one teaspoon. It's called a flipper because you just flip it inside out, and now you have a half a tablespoon and a half a teaspoon. I, um, a sales rep gave me this last year, about two or three days before I was prepping for the Christmas class, and I was baking cookies, cakes, all this stuff because it was our recipe contest. This is the only measuring spoon I used the whole entire day. So you can get rid of your whole drawer full of measuring spoons. Just have the flipper. This is a great stocking stuffer, great little Christmas gift idea. Put it on as outside of a kitchen package for a bow. I love this. Um, you probably even want to get one for yourself. But anyway, so well, here's I go ahead and do it. All right, go ahead. How about it? So that's a teaspoon, see? Teaspoon and a half of baking powder. See how easy that was? I don't have to go clanging around. Um, my measuring spoons. Five, five, six. Five, five, six. The fourth is not on here, but I just kind of guess at it. So, and then now my half teaspoon of salt. So those are my dry ingredients. They come in green, red, and blue? Yellow. Blue. Okay. So there's our dry ingredients and then our quarter cup of honey granules. And I think her recipes, I don't know if her recipes use sugar or evaporated cane juice. I'm not, I can't remember, but honey granules always substitutes for white sugar one for one, no questions asked, and it works just fine. I've never had anything that it didn't work in. So um, here's our dry ingredients. Now I'm gonna have to get my chilled butter. can't fit it out because it, the important thing about scones or biscuits or pie dough is using cold butter. And I actually learned something recently about making flaky biscuits and pie dough. The secret is to not um, cut the butter in so fine that it's, it's completely cut in and, and very crumbly. Um, there's a time to do that when, say, for a pie crust, if you want to blend it in completely where you see no flecks of butter at all, then you'll get more of a crumbly pie crust. And that's good when you're doing a custard-type um, filling like pumpkin pie or, or a cream pie or something like that. But if you want a flakier pie crust or a flakier biscuit or scone, you want to just cut the butter in with your fingers or um, you can use two knives or a pastry cutter if you have one. Um, but you actually want the butter to still be a little, have some little clumps of butter in there. And that will give you your, your um, nice flaky biscuit or scone. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the butter in here. 
I remember watching my grandmother make um, biscuits growing up. Like I said, I grew up in the South, and I come from some, a line of great, great cooks. And my grandmother never measured anything when she was making her biscuits, and she never used a pastry cutter. She always just worked the dough with her hands, and um, it, it was just truly an art to watch her. She always had a, a big, shallow, wide bowl, and she just kind of put the, well, now she used shortening or lard, and uh, she put it in the middle of the, the big bowl of flour, and she just kind of worked it in and crumbled that up. Then she took the milk and just kind of worked it in. And she always had a big ring of flour out around the edges. And I always wondered, you know, how did she know? But she just could feel the dough and, and know what it needed. So, um, and the difference in a, a scone and a biscuit is typically a scone has eggs in it. And I double-checked this recipe because it didn't have the egg in it. I'm thinking she's maybe using the sour cream for that extra extra fat and, and leavening there. But you could put an egg in here if you wanted to. Um, it'll just take a little little more flour. So you see I've still got, I've got some clumps of butter there. That's okay because where that butter lays down will actually make a flaky biscuit. That's what like a croissant, you make the dough and then you take a layer of butter and spread it and then you fold the croissant dough over that butter and you roll it and then you fold it, and you roll it, and you fold it, and it's getting those layers of butter that makes that flaky croissant dough. One day I'll do some croissants in a cooking class. But, um, but here's our, our um, scone dough. I, I did a little history research on scones and uh, biscuits. You know, a biscuit in, in England is a cookie or a cracker, but um, Americans kind of came up with uh, the term biscuit for this type of, of food. And they said the American biscuit, though, is not like the scone because they think that um, when the settlers first came here that they were so poor that they couldn't um, afford the butter and the eggs, so they started using lard and, um, and buttermilk and things like that. So we're just going to work the, the sour cream in. Whoops, I was supposed to put the lemon zest in that and the rosemary, and I forgot. Let me get my zester. I was supposed to mix the, the lemon zest and the sour cream together, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, Here's my rosemary, cut this from my garden today. But I wanted to show you our little um, herb saver. I'm, the more I'm around it <laughs> and use it, the more impressed I am with it. Let me show you this time. I actually cut this and put it in here over a month ago. It's got a little water well down here and you fill it up to the fill line with water and then you put your stems in there so that the stems are down in the the water and then you just put your herb and it's not the least bit slimy or or rotting or anything and like i said we got this for the fall comfort class and that was oh no maybe it was the thanksgiving it's whatever sharon did right at the first of november so it was the first of november so it was right at a month so and then you just keep it in your refrigerator and it keeps the herbs very very fresh so we're going to just use we're going to strip our rosemary here that's the herb saver. Hmm? Did someone have a question? First I thought it was just kind of, that's kind of cute, but now that, that I've really used it, because how many of you buy fresh herbs to use in a recipe and then you come back, you know, two weeks later and they're all um, like molded and nasty in the, in the bag. On that note, where's Ashley? <coughs> <clears throat> on that note, we have another thing. Uh, we actually could have a drawing for the, um, the veggie fresh. I'm going to show them that while we're talking about the herb saver. This you're going to absolutely fall in love with. This is a product Brad and I found at the Natural Products Expo, too. And um, just ingenious technology. It's filled with uh, some type of, of uh, minerals 
that actually absorb ethylene gas. Ethylene gas is what your fruits and vegetables give off that cause it to ripen. And these, it's just the little bag is filled with um, these minerals that absorb that ethylene gas. And so when you open the package, if you want to show it to them, when you open this package, there's a little clamshell container with these minerals in it, and you just put them in your vegetable drawer and it can keep your produce for several weeks longer. And I actually tried it when we first came back with raspberries. I put the raspberries in this drawer without one and raspberries at home with one. And the raspberries here, just several days later, you know how delicate raspberries are, were already molding and the ones at home lasted over a week. Um, for raspberries, that is amazing. In fact, some, some of the packages were still like t uh, more, almost two weeks that's unheard of for raspberries. Sometimes they like mold before you get them home to the, from the grocery store. You're like, they were not moldy. I know that I did not pick out a moldy batch. And you're going to put them away and you're like, huh. Um, so this is the veggie this is the uh, This is the little baggie that's inside the plastic. There's a like a hard plastic container in here. Um, yeah. And don't and you just, open this. Don't open that. <clears throat> and you that. just take this outside wrapper off. You take the outside wrapper off and it's a clamshell like plastic container. Just put the plastic container in your vegetable drawer. They, they've done a lot of testing with it and they're saying they're, they're, um, who's really loving it is like smoothie bars that have all those that fresh um, like raspberries and strawberries and they're rotting so fast and they have so much throwaway. They're loving this because it's extending the life of those berries and those vegetables. So those are kind of the same thoughts. You know why I hate it when I Sometimes I get in this cooking mood and I go to the grocery store and I buy all this stuff and I think I'm going to cook all this stuff over the next few weeks and, or few days. And the next thing you know, you open the drawer and it's been two weeks and you pull out this soggy stuff and you throw all this produce away. I mean, it's not going to make miracles happen, you know, still, but it really, I've noticed a significant difference in what is rotting in the vegetable drawer. Um, 90 days. So it's eight ninety nine. I think it's nine ninety five. Nine ninety five, and, and it'll it last three months. 90, yeah. So it's really, really a good deal if it's going to especially help you save on the produce. And the okay. number is four six six. In the back. Okay. So I finally chopped my rosemary, and I'm just going to throw it in. And now I'm going to zest my lemon. And it says two teaspoons, but honestly, Ashley and I both, it's just oh, the zest of a lemon. <laughs> and I don't think you can get too much zest. And there's several zesting methods. I used to always do it like this because it seemed more logical to me because then the zest just fell right into the bowl. But I noticed when Lars, um, the German chef, came and did a cooking class for it, for us, he did it like this. And I asked him why he did it that way, and he was said, well, so he could see where he had zested. And I know with me doing it like this, you're always, and you can see how far you've gone down. I'm always like, like that. So I've kind of, kind of started doing it this way, and I, I really, really like it. These are our, um, our citrus zesters. Well, they'll zest anything. They'll zest chocolate, they'll zest the citrus. What I love about this is this is your cover to keep you from getting your knuckles scraped when you have it in your drawer. But when you're using it to zest and you actually want to measure how much zest, you can put it on the back side and you zest your, your lemon or lime or your orange or whatever you're zesting. And this is actually has graduations here up, up this thing and you can actually tap it down and see how much um, measurement you have. This is the finest zester I have ever used. Um, this is by Queasy Pro, and it actually has etchings. I don't know if you can see them up there, and it makes the food slide right over it. The same with the box grater. I've now used a box grater like, like I've never used before because it, everything just slides on it very, very nicely. I'll show you that in just a minute. But anyway, so here's our zester. And this doesn't get any juice of the lemon. It's just the zest. That wasn't what I was supposed to do. I forgot I had that on. Okay. All right, so now I've got my sour cream and my lemon zest in there. Supposed to put mix that in with the sour cream so you don't get it 
just in a in a lump so it gets spread out better because see now I've got you certainly could mm-hmm and in fact I'm going to use kefir instead of the buttermilk I'm loving 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 making kefir I've, I've made a gallon this week already it is so so easy with the kefir starter um, let me get that out if you don't know about kefir kefir is a fermented dairy product dairy food it's liquid yogurt is what most people know it as it's liquid yogurt uh, Russians call it kefir um, but it's we Americans say kefir and um, I used to always think it was just liquid yogurt and that there was no difference until I really did some microbiology homework and found out that the organisms it's raining hang on let me get my kefir the organisms that are used to culture kefir are different from the organisms used to culture yogurt. And it only makes sense if it were the same organisms, well then it would culture it solid instead of liquid. So um, the kefir organisms, um, coffee, oh you need some, I've, I've got a baggie, of, there's some, yep. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, so the organisms used to cul culture kefir, um, they actually can recolonize your gut. The organisms that are that ferment yogurt do not colonize your gut. Though they live in your gut, you can't eat them and have them then um, recolonize your gut. They do great things when you eat them, so don't quit eating your yogurt. They're full, yogurt's full of enzymes, and those organisms actually have produced um, natural antibiotics and they're full of B vitamins but your kefir organisms can actually recolonize your gut. And what's exciting about kefir and um, making kefir is you don't have to heat the milk. You just stir in the starter and we sell the little packets of starter. Let me show you. We sell the little packets of starter. There's six packages in here or you can buy a single one. But all you do is in a quart of milk, you use one package and you stir it into the cold milk and leave it sitting on your counter. You don't even have to incubate it um, at a warm temperature. So it just sits on your counter and then you um, just, it takes about 24 hours the first time you ferment it. Um, it's rotten milk. <laughs> Um, it's probably about seven to ten days I would count on the organisms being alive um, so that you can reculture your next batch and the thing is the nice thing about it is then once my kefir is made I can take a couple of tablespoons oh it's about a quarter cup per quart and culture my next quart, quart of milk with my um, kefir oh it's two tablespoons it's is it a cup per gallon though or half okay and you can even Reculture, a, you could culture a gallon of it at a time. And you can do that up to seven times before you have to start over. Yeah, okay. The more amount, I don't know if you can hear them because of the rain. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I want just kind of a lumpy dough. You don't want to over mix it. I still got a little dryness, so I'm going to put the rest of my, my milk in here and just kind of stir that around and I'm just going to kind of fold it over itself. You don't want to get carried away with kneading biscuit or scone dough because if you, you don't really want to develop that gluten. You want it to be flaky and it, if you over knead it, it'll be kind of tough. They're still edible, but they'll be a little tough. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to put a little bit of flour on my board. I love my rolling mats, the silicone roll mats. And the nice thing about these is you can actually um, bake on them if you want. They will go in the oven. So like the small one, this fits a standard uh, jelly roll pan. So you could actually roll and lift and put it right on your pan and just cook it on it. So a lightly floured, floured board here and I'm going to just turn my dough out. And I'm going to just give it a couple of kneads, not a lot, just a couple just to kind of smooth it out and then I'm going to pat it into a circle 
about one inch thick. Is that what it says? Okay. And um, if you want to make the little mini scones that I made for y'all, you can divide this dough into two pieces and pat it into a, about a five inch circle and cut um, six out of each one. We actually did eight out of each one. So we got 16 out of this batch. But if you want bigger scones, um, you're going to just cut it into eight pieces here with the whole amount of dough. Okay. All right. And then I'm just going to put them on a cookie sheet or I'm going to use my new baking stone. I love the baking stones. I, I've fallen in love with them. For the longest time, I never liked the stone because I did not know what to do with it when I wasn't using it. And now I've learned you just leave it in the oven. <laughs> and it actually helps your oven keep its temperature better because the stone um, gets hot. I've chosen the Emile Henri baking stone, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and just put these on. At home, when I'm close to my oven, I actually preheated the stone in the oven, and then I just slid the, the rack out and just put them on the hot stone, and they really made them rise very nicely, very quickly, just really, really nice. But you can cook them on a cookie sheet, or you can put them on just the cold stone. Okay, so that's my eight scones. Um, yes. Oh, I did about a handful. Um, she's asking about when I changed the rosemary for the cranberries. I just did a handful of, um, of cranberries, the dried cranberries, which, by the way, the dried cranberries that we sell now are, are organic, and they are sweetened and infused with apple juice instead of sugar. Very difficult. In fact, I, I have not found uh, cranberries, dried cranberries in the grocery store that are not sweetened with all that sugar. So um, that's really nice. But anyway, this is the, the Emile Henri, the baking stone. And what I love about the Emile Henri stone, because I looked at other stones. First of all, this one is made in France instead of in Asia. I've looked at some stones that are much cheaper in price, and they're made in Asia. And honestly, i just just not sure about things that come out of Asia. I'd rather go um, more with a European country. But the nice thing about the Emile Henri stone is it has a coating. Now, the thing about this coating is it is a clay-type process, and it's called crazing. So it's still clay, but it's, it gives it a coating so that oils won't soak into that clay and then smoke up your house. If you've, how many of y'all had stones, and that's the downside of them? Once you do a pizza or something on there and you spill the cheese over, now it smokes and all that in your house. But the um, Emile Henri stone won't do that, yet the crazing is microporous, so you still get all the benefits of cooking on a stone because this is actually a stoning kind of process. So it's really, really nice. It cleans up beautifully. Um, it's just, just a wonderful, wonderful stone. And I love the red. Um, we have green and we have black and we have kind of a purple color. Um, and like I said, at home I would have just preheated this in the oven and then thrown my scones just right on the hot one. You can do it either way. It doesn't matter. So um, this is the Emile Henri. We have the rectangle and we have the rounds. Great, great Christmas gift. The nice thing about scones is they only take like 10 minutes to cook. Well, about 15, I guess it is. Okay, you want to cook them at a hot enough temperature. With biscuits and scones, you want the hot temperature so that um, the outside gets kind of done and, and a little crispy, but the inside stays moist. That's, that's your oven temperature thing. If you do a hot oven, it's going to get outside crispy, inside moist, and that's why you do kind of biscuits and, and scones and things like that at the higher temperature. All right, what I'm going to do for you now is the lemon curd. And lemon curd, don't be put off by lemon curd. It is so, so easy to make. And also don't be put off by the name. It does not have milk in it. Um, a custard is any type of liquid that is emulsified using eggs, okay? 
So you've got your cream custards, which your mousse is I'm going to make in just a minute, but your lemon curd is an egg custard. It's an egg-based custard, and it has no milk in it. So um, it's really, really a nice thing to make and to have on hand. One recipe here in your book makes about a cup and a third. Usually, mm -hmm. uh, it, it'll hold uh, two cups, one pint, other side. Okay. The nice thing about the whipped cream makers is they'll hold exactly a pint of whipped cream. And once you make it, you can use any kind of um, flavoring. I've done lemon. I've done chocolate. I've done all kinds of things in there. And um, they will keep then for about two weeks. The cream will keep, it'll stay nice and good and fresh for about two weeks under the pressure. We've even had um, where I wanted to empty it to do something else at Christmas time. And I actually piped them because they'll make like little stars, the little the little um, tube here mm -hmm. will make a, like a little star and I piped it onto wax paper and put it in the, re in the freezer and froze it and then bagged it and at Christmas time when we were all having hot chocolate and things like that we just took a little thing out and dropped it in the top of the hot chocolate. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. yep. So anyway, all right, let's get on with our lemon curd. Lemon curd is very, very easy. Now I've seen differing recipes. I've seen where you put um, just the, the juice and the, sh and the sugar and the zest in the saucepan and cook it and then you temper your eggs. But I thought this recipe was interesting in that you put your honey granules, your lemon zest, and your eggs in the pot first. So you're actually going to cook your eggs just a little bit here and then we'll put in our lemon juice um, and butter at the end. Okay? so. And you want to stir, stir, stir on this. Uh-oh, do I have? Never fear, I have a drawer of lemons. Have a lot of naked ones in there. Okay, you want to stir your lemon curd. You want to make sure that that egg does not scorch. If you scorch it, start over. Okay? So I'm going to do my, my zest of my lemon. Uh-oh. Hey, Ashley. You know what I actually need you to do? I forgot. This needs two-thirds a cup of lemon juice. I normally you just use my squeezer, but with that much, can you get out? Yeah, get out those naked lemons and juice it with the attachment to the assistant. Two-thirds of a cup. Okay. All right. Well, here, just do it with the squeezer then. Okay. So you want to stir. I'm going to turn up my heat just a little here. I left it on low until I got everything in there. Just a medium heat. And um, I've done this in the summertime. It's very, very delicious. I make these brown sugar shortcakes. Basically, it's just use Sucanot, the brown one, instead of um, the molasses grain, instead of the, the white Sucanot. And, um, and so they'll make more like a, a brown sugar, a little caramel more tasting, and do the lemon curd and then serve it with the fresh berries, the raspberry, blueberries, and strawberries, sliced, sweetened just a little bit. And then I discovered the scone cream. Did y'all like the scone cream? And I'm not going to make that for you because all it is is whipping cream whipped and then you fold in um, some sour cream and vanilla. It just has a little bit of sour cream to give it that little bit of tartness. Okay? So all you want to do, can you see? And Yeah, you can. You just want this to, to stir this and heat it until it melts the sugar. Yes? Sheesh. Um, there is in bake things. I don't think you could do it here, but yes, you could use, um, you can use flaxseed. You can grind flaxseed and make a binder. The book um, Grains of Truth um, uses that. Sharon. Sharon is the fabulous, no eggs, no dairy, no gluten, the no anything, and her food is delicious. But um, what do you use for egg substitute? Um, 
I'll repeat it for the camera. Teaspoon of flaxseed, or yeah, come up here. For one egg, generally what I use is um, one, I'm sorry, two teaspoons of flaxseed and a third cup of water. You put in a blender and it becomes a nice gelatin to it. Um, there's also other things such as um, seaweed, believe it's called egg egg of um, flax. Have you ever seen that egg or flax mm -hmm. before? Um, flakes, actually. Um, that works really well, too. Um, you can actually use flaxseed meal depending on how, um, it depends really the item that you're using, what kind of, if you're using baking, cooking, uh, depends on what you're trying to adhese. That's the whole thing. What are you trying to adhese? Can I answer something maybe specifically? What are you trying to adhese? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know of anything for here. Well, you know, personally, one of the things that I was thinking about would also help is just coconut oil. Because coconut oil is, you know, it's going, when it, when it starts to cool, how it dries, so it's going to adhese a little more. Um, and I would use also, I would use some of the, um, the agar flakes also, and maybe just a little, with a little lemon, just for flavor. Yeah. But that would do that. It would, would hold Zan it together. Would xanthan gum? Um, no. Okay. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, but there, there are some. Arrowroot? Are, um, arrowroot works as a thickener, so that's going to be a work, um, thickener. Potato flour, that's a thickener. Um, your bean flour that you use also, that's it. That's a yeah. thickener. So it's almost like if you're thinking of a thickener or an adhesive um, to, to use that. Okay. Thank you. All righty. So what you want to do, this is cooking. You just want to stir, stir, stir. Ashley, will you hand me a spoon? And Ashley squeezed all those naked lemons. By naked, those are all the ones we zested today for all the lemon, uh, the the scones. So we had all these lemons in the refrigerator that didn't have any more zest on it. So we were able to squeeze them with the citrus squeezer. What you want it to do is you want it to coat the back of a spoon so that's plenty thick enough. And now it looks kind of thin, but it will actually thicken more as it cools. So um, I'm going to put it, I like to go ahead and get it out of the hot pot, especially if I'm going to be eating it shortly. Um, a long time. She said, how long will it keep in the refrigerator? It's a long time. Uh, it tastes delicious <laughs> for a long time. I don't remember. It doesn't usually stay in there that long, but I have found stray bowls, you know, where there was only a little dab left and it's so delicious you don't throw any of it out, you know. So um, I have had it for a while. I mean, I'm talking like several weeks, maybe even several months. So there's our lemon curd to go on our scones. And, um, and then, of course, you make your, your cream. All right. Let's move on to our chocolate mousse. Did you? Oh no! I'm gonna I'm gonna make you some tea first, cause um, scones are kind of a tea party dish. So I thought I would um, make some tea real quick, and and then we'll make the chocolate mousse. We have several options for making tea. Ashley, if you will get me um, the hot pot back up here. Let me just clear some of this away. All right. Uh, yes, I'm glad she's, she asked, her question was, would I use the kefir in the waffles and the muffins and the, absolutely. I now use kefir instead of buttermilk because I, I keep the kefir on hand. It's cheaper than buttermilk because however much you spend on a gallon of milk, you know, whether it's four to seven or eight dollars a gallon, depending on what kind of milk you buy, um, you know, it's still cheaper than buttermilk to make your own. It's only if you spend four dollars a gallon on a gallon of milk, it's a dollar than a quart. So oh, it may be about the same as far as price, but I always have it. And it's just, and I'll tell you, when I, when, the first time I used the kefir in the, um, in the muffins, 
uh, noticeable difference. They were the lightest, fluffiest muffins I had ever ha made. So they were really, really nice. So. Um, I've not found that it makes any difference. In fact, the kefir grains are really nice in that you can you can ferment fruit juice, you can ferment coconut milk, you can ferment your soy, your almond, your rice milk, you can ferment any of those milks. Mm -mm. Nope, you can ferment fruit juice. The fruit juice is really, really good. The kefir organisms actually do pr produce some carbon dioxide so it actually tastes like a soda, a natural soda. Um, in fact, right after we started carrying the kefir grains, we had done a class and we had some leftover herbal tea and we fermented the herbal tea. Okay, kefir starter powder. Um, there's a difference in kefir starter powder and the kefir grains. But anyway, we fermented some herbal tea and it was like the wild strawberry and it was already sweetened. It tasted like a... Uh, Hang on. I think I've blown a circuit here. I can't ever see. Oh, yeah, it's on. I can't see the lights. I can't tell if it's on or not. Um, anyway, uh, what was I telling you? It, uh, the, fer the fermented kefir starter in the, um, in the tea, the wild strawberry herbal tea already sweetened, it tasted, I don't know if you've ever had any of our Virgils and Reed's natural sodas, that's what it tasted like. It was a little bubbly and it was just, it was very, very delicious. So you can do your juices and things like that. And the thing with the fermenting the juice with the starter grains is um, then you can use that juice to ferment your next juice indefinitely. It doesn't, it's not just seven times, you can use it forever. So um, in there, yes. Absolutely. Her question is, can you flavor the kefir and drink it like the strawberries you, um, or the products you would buy in the store? Absolutely. You want to make it plain and then sweeten it after you've made it, if you're using the milk. Okay? So, um, yes. But absolutely. Sweeten it with a little honey. That was my breakfast this morning. It was a little honey, a little vanilla, about a cup of kefir, um, some organic frozen blueberries, and a little half a banana to make it a little bit sweeter. And it was fabulous. And um, that was the last I think I had <laughs> today. Hmm. Um, so anyway, that was that was my breakfast. But yes, you can sweeten it then after you make it. All right, let's. Um, we're going to brew some tea here. I've got several tea maker making possibilities. If you saw the tea maker cups when you came in, if you tasted the tea, I love my Ingenu tea um, tea cup. I've actually had one for years and years, long before we started carrying them. When we expanded our store, this was. One of the first things I wanted to start carrying were the teacups because I just love herbal tea and I, I love the way these cups work. How they work is you put your loose tea, your herbal tea, in there. We sell it. Let me see what I've got in my little stash up here. One of my favorites is the fruit medley. So you're going to put your... Um, your loose tea, and this one's actually a quart, and the small one is 16 ounces. So you do a teaspoon of tea per, per cup, or you follow the directions that tells you. So you put your loose tea in here, and then you pour your hot water in, you let it steep, and then when you're ready to drink it, you just sit it over your cup, and it drains the water out and leaves the tea leaves in, so you don't have to have a strainer of any kind. So now you can just have your tea. Perfect, perfect gift for somebody. Teacher gift or mother gift or sister gift or whatever with a little baggie of tea. And we have these great um, gift packs. It's got six. Ashley, is it six tins? Okay. Ashley's going to show you that. Oh, um, and then. The scones. Yes, let me check the scones. Um, the only thing about the stone that. Um, any kind of stone, you don't want to put it down on, a, on your cold counter and you don't want to put it on a wet cloth. So make sure you do have a, a hot plate or something. Okay, a couple of things that I want to show you. These are our new um, gift sets um, that we ordered from Adagio. We actually have 
You'll notice I've got another box over there and up at the front register we have one with a blue dot on it and one with a red dot. Um, and that means that they are actually different on the inside, the ones with the blue dot. And these are the, these are the cute little tins. You come, they come with six of them. The flavors are gingerbread, candy apple, pumpkin spice, cranberry, chestnut, and the candy cane um, are the six different flavors that they come in there. Um, the one with the blue sticker on it means that the tea is bagged. They come in little tea bags. Um, so if this is not necessarily a tea connoisseur, but someone who you think might enjoy it, the tea bags might be the way you want to go um, because then they can just steep that in a cup of hot water. Um, also, we have these little, these little tea steepers and the bag fits down in the little strawberry looking thing. So the tea bag f actually fits down in there really nicely. Um, this and then break up your little tins as teacher gifts. So buy one gift set and several of these um, would be perfect uh, teacher gifts coming Put it up. inside a mug. Absolutely. Or stick, yeah, stick it down inside of a mug, something like that. Um, and then we also have the tea <clears throat> um, bagged this way for you. Um, you can get several servings out of this size so that you can try it. And then we also sell it your, by the pound if for you your find iced tea. for your iced tea or if you find one that your family really really likes then that's also a way you can go um you showed them this already yes correct? And then this is the this is the smaller size perfect for a cup you know but you can also make um you don't have to like this holds 32 ounces yeah, of water yeah. and it would be four servings of tea um you can certainly make it super super concentrated um and then drain it into your pitcher Add your sweetener, fill it with ice, fill it with cold water, and there you have your, you know, a whole gallon of iced tea. Um, if you've been to any of the other classes recently, you've seen I've used the candy cane um, tea to make a cold, um, like an iced latte. Um, and with that, I do for a quart of latte, and you can request this okay. recipe, we've got it printed. Um, for a quart of latte, I do a quarter of a cup of the candy cane um, loose tea and I do one cup of boiling water, so a quarter of a cup of loose tea and a cup of boiling water, drain that into my quart jar, quarter cup of the agave syrup, and then fill it with cold milk the rest of the way up. Um, and I, hot, it's very good, but iced, it is, which is amazing, this absolutely is the amazing. iced tea maker, which I love it because this holds exactly enough water to make a half gallon. Do you put a quarter cup per half gallon? I do. Uh, depends on what kind. What kind are you it's doing? It's the fruit medley. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little more. A little more. I usually do a third of a cup. My kids' favorite is the wild strawberry. That's yes. absolutely their favorite. And then did you tell them about the dewy cherry? Uh, the dewy cherry and then use it in the sparkler. That's, um, it tastes just like a black cherry soda. That's what I should have done because I was going to do, I was going to sparkle this. Turkey? That, I no. don't know about the turkey. Well, it's hot. Okay. It's time to check it. All right, well, get on with it. I put the turkey on an hour and 20 minutes ago was when I lit it. It was, what, 10 after, was it? I think so. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hold on. Excuse me. Just need another minute or two. Now, Judith, I have a question for you. Okay, so we know that the English do their whole cream and sugar in their tea. Do the Irish do cream and sugar in their tea or just straight up tea? Okay, so milk. Okay. Okay, so normally, okay. All right, well, there you go. So the Irish do just milk in their tea, which we as Americans and especially Southerners are like, you're putting the dairy in the tea. I mean, it's hard enough, you know, dealing with the northerners that don't put any sweetener in the tea to begin with. But then to go, why are we putting milk in our tea? Um, but really, hot tea, I'll, if you've never tried it with half and half or cream or milk, it really, it totally changes things. And it is so good. In fact, the gingerbread tea um, that I brewed, um, my husband really likes it, and he really likes the Christmas tea as well. The Christmas tea that I had out tonight is very cinnamon and cloves and orange. It actually has dried orange pieces in the tea as well. Um, he liked the Christmas tea just that way with a little bit of agave syrup and that was it. But the gingerbread, he said, 
was way better with a little bit of, um, we actually had, we had milk at home. So he did a little milk and the agave syrup made it very, very creamy um, and very smooth. So um, can I raffle off some tea? Absolutely. Or why don't you finish talk, talking about that okay. and well, then I'll finish I'm just going to show you the tea maker. This is um, a chemical free plastic that is heat resistant. The little tea strainer fits down in there and infuses your water and it will hold exactly enough to make your half gallon. And then uh, this is the, this doesn't come with it, but anyway, so the set comes like this. And what I love about this is then I'm gonna fill this totally with ice, put my sweetener in and I can pour then my hot tea over it, shake it up. And these are totally airtight or sealed lids. You can turn it on its side and it's not going to drip, 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 drip. So they're completely, you can lay them, if you put them in a cooler or in your refrigerator on their side, they'll be fine. So um, that's why I'm going to make the, the, the iced tea for you. I'm going to have a little sip. That. Mm, that one's good. What is that one? Okay. All right. Let me get this out. I, I actually set the timer for a few oh, more minutes. Okay, I thought there's... they needed to brown okay. up a little bit more. All right. So okay. Now. I'm going to do one of the gift sets, and I'm going to let you choose whether you want the tin with the bags, the tea bags. It has five tea bags per little tin, or if you want the tins that are loose. You just tell me. Five zero four. Yay! Do you want the bagged tea or the loose tea? It's just loose inside the tin, or there, or there's five little bags. Do you want loose? Loose is red, bags are blue. All right. It, and well, the. Okay. I'm gonna let this tea finish steeping. Just a few more minutes. Herbal tea, your black teas, your green teas, those can steep too long. They'll get a little bitter the longer you steep them. Um, oh, my mic's not on. Are we okay here? It just needs to come up closer to me. Okay. Um, is it on now? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's just, because it's on, because I can hear my, you know. Um, Ashley, can you go fill this with some ice? We can get it out of that cooler back there. And I'll finish making the tea, and then I'll come, I'll let you sparkle some. This is our, um, it's called the Twist and Sparkle. It's the coolest thing. You can carbonate your own juice, soda water, whatever you want to do. Um, it instantly carbonates it. It's made by the same people that make the um, whipped cream maker. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to use a cartridge to carbonate it. So I'm going to let her do that but I'm gonna make um, the chocolate mousse for you. Okay, um, actually I wonder if I should make the berries. Um, huh? Oh, we did the, oh that's my scones, that's what you're telling me. All right, all right. What would it be like if I didn't need y'all? Y'all would feel not needed. Oh, wow. Okay, come on. He wants to show you the turkey. Oh, my goodness. Did you smell that? Can you smell it? I don't know if you can smell it, but I want some. I'm, like, really hungry. Don't cut it yet. It needs to rest. Always let your meat rest just a little bit, 10, 15 minutes. Okay, that looks incredible. And if you want to check it. I'm, I'm not making gravy, so nope. You can if you want. Okay, there's our scones. I need a hot. I need that thing back over here. That board will be fine. Okay, so there's our scones. And that's gonna go forward. Um, hey, Caleb. I was fixing to make the chocolate mousse, but we're not serving it in the class. Do you want me to go in and make the raspberry compost so you can start? Yeah, because I already got them. Okay. Huh? Okay, I'm going to make the mousse. I was just going to, we got one more thing to plate and serve you in the class. The mousse you already had. 
So I'm not giving you more because it has to chill. Um, but okay, I tell you what, I'll finish the tea real quick here. I'm going to sweeten it with a little agave. I use about a half a cup per half a gallon. So I just pour it over the ice. This is great in the summertime. I just love the whole system that it just perfectly works. So then I just pour my steep tea right over my ice. You can use stevia, you can use sucanat with honey, you can use whatever you want. I just left this out. Nope. I don't know what you were asking, but I know I'm not because I don't I'm not going to use anything else under there. So there's that. And then I just put my lid on. And then I just shake it up. And I have sweetened, ice cold tea ready to serve. And see how it's not leaking? Isn't that nice? So there it is. And it's a half gallon. So I'll let Ashley sparkle it while I make the, um, I'm going to go ahead and make the, the raspberry real quick. It just needs heat, heating up. And so he can do the millet pudding. All right. So we're going to do the millet pudding real quick here. And then we'll do the mousse. And then we'll just talk a little, I'm running a little behind, we'll talk a little bit about um, the uh, substitutions for your recipes. And then I'll give you your special gift for coming and enduring. So if you want to look at your, rat, your uh, millet pudding. And this is like four recipes. Oh, that's honey. So I'm going to just put about a quarter cup of honey over my raspberries. Measure it very, very carefully. Right here. Okay, let me get right there just a minute. Did you show them this one? I just talked to them about it just briefly. She's going to show you the sparkler. I'm just going to stir up these raspberries. You want to just gently stir them. You don't really want to mash the berries. You just want to gently stir them so they make a little bit of a syrup. There's two lines on the sparkler. The lower one is for things other than water. And then the top line is for if you're going to sparkle water. All right, now this is made by the same company that makes the, uh, the whipped cream makers. Um, Put your wand down in there. Biggest thing you want to remember is that the cartridges for the whipped cream maker and the cartridges for the sparkler are not the same. Hey, Caleb. I always fight with this thing. My brother David, <clears throat> sweet, sweet David. Um, he was over at his fiance's parents' house cooking for them, and um, there we go. Put the cartridge in before you screw the thing on. That makes sense. Because here we go. You wait for it to completely quit fizzing. So anyway, he's over there making some sort of something for them, and decides to make whipped cream, and like makes a batch and like squirts it out and he's like it's kind of spicy why is the whipped cream spicy so he empties it all out makes another batch it, it wouldn't quite whip right and it tasted funny spicy is what he said um so he makes another batch and he's like 
it's still spicy. He's like, maybe it was bad whipped cream. So he goes to the store and buys more whipped cream and comes back. I think he made a third one and then realized that he was pressurizing the whipped cream maker with the CO2 cartridges. Cream. Sparkle. Sparkle. You don't want sparkling cream. <laughs> okay. And you want to wait until that's done fizzing. It was done fizzing. Okay. It's you. All right. Caleb, you want to bring me a little pudding over here? And we're going to build the millet pudding. I made the pudding ahead of time because it really, you just cook the millet. And all I did was cook it in the pressure cooker instead of simmering it in the pot. You can cook it regularly about 20 minutes, but in the pressure cooker, it's perfect in 10 minutes. Just perfect. And then I followed the rest of the recipe. Then the pudding mixture is ricotta cheese, honey, the lemon zest, the lemon juice, a cup of heavy whipping cream chilled, and um, whip that with the honey granules, and then fold it all into this beautiful, beautiful pudding. Now, Caleb's going to pipe it into some cups here. But So here's how you want to serve it. So you can do it in just a custard cup, or what I was thinking is a little bit of pudding. I probably should have could have gone red first. This is a beautiful dish to serve at Christmas time. And then a little bit of your raspberries. And the whole idea is to serve the, the pudding cold and the warm raspberries. It's just a really, really nice, nice combination. It's not too sweet. So it's a nice dish that you can make this ahead of time and then make your raspberries. All you're doing is just heating them up with that honey until they, they run off. Judith, there's very, something very similar to this in your cookbook, isn't there, with the steel-cut oats instead of the millet? Okay. Yeah. You can, this, is, this is tasty enough. It's not so sweet. Makes a great dessert, but you could eat this for breakfast. I mean, it's millet. And millet is very high in B17. It's very easy to digest really really good for you we feed it to the birds in this country but we need to be eating it so there's your millet pudding with raspberry compost why the birds aren't dying of cancer and we are um, b17 is also known as laetrile which is your controversial cancer treatment that's been legislated illegal to be used in this country it's nothing more than vitamin b17 so here's our um our raspberry compote and i'm going to have caleb go ahead and build these flour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You want to take that over there? Yep, I got and now we're going to make the chocolate mousse. Y'all were wanting that, huh? But you already had it now, remember. Um, do y'all have to leave? Okay. I was like, are, are you sure you're not leaving? Okay. You're going to buy a raffle ticket? You want me for, for a day or an evening? We can do lunch or dinner. It doesn't have to be dinner. If you'd rather bring your girlfriends and um, come for lunch, we can do that. It'll be here at the Bread Beckers or um, dinner. We can do that. Whatever you want to do. Whatever works for you. And we'll give you several menu options. So, y'all buy those raffle tickets now. There we go. Isn't that nice? I want some. And then your cartridge is a one use. It's about 75 cents a cartridge. Which one are you looking for? So um, I'm like really wanting some of this. I don't think I have a cup. It stays fizzy a long time. The, the, the cap is really nice and if you close it down, it's just like soda. Once you bubble it, it does stay fizzy, but um, it's just really nice. Oh wow, I gotta taste it. Oh, that's really good. It's not too sweet. It's just got a really nice, nice flavor. All right, let's do our chocolate mousse. All right, let me get my cream out. All right. This is the last thing I'm going to make for you, and then we'll go over the substitution. So we won't be too long. Huh? Yeah, the recipe is with the, um, it's back with the buckwheat. Um, it's on the, it's after the, uh, 
Page three. Yep, French vanilla coffee mousse. You want all my notes? <laughs> okay. So um, a mousse is a cream-based dessert. Okay, it's, it's kind of in that same custard family, but it's the cream instead of the egg. And um, uh, there's lots of things you can do with mousse. But what I'm going to do here is we're going to use one cup of our cream. It calls for three cups of cream. I have never used so much whipping cream in my whole entire life. For this class tonight, I think I used, I used eight quarts, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, I used nine quarts and two pints of whipping cream to make everything we made tonight. But now that was for 110 people, and that, so that was a lot. And you don't eat all of these things in one meal, so you're okay. It's okay. And then eat lots of bread, break down that fat, no problem, okay? Grains have all the nutrients to help you break down all this good fat. And real fat is good fat. Don't want to buy the fake stuff. So I meant to wet the pot. I actually learned that whenever you're heating milk, if you'll rinse your pot with water and just pour it out, just get it wet, it'll keep that milk from, from scorching. And I just was talking and chatting about breaking down fat and totally forgot to tell you that. Um, we want to heat our milk, and um, we're going to use our coffee. And I am using the Sumatra. It's our new um, organic coffee. And the reason I chose the Sumatra, we have a couple of varieties. We have the Papua New Guinea and we have the um, breakfast blend or something like that. But I chose the Sumatra because it said it was a low acid bean and um, it has hints of chocolate overtones naturally in the bean. So I chose to use it. I am not using a, the French vanilla flavored bean. You certainly can do that if you buy it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grind my, um, my beans with my Try Best Blender here. And then this is just my regular bean. Okay, and I'm gonna use two tablespoons and you put it in the milk. This is my grinds. And then since I'm not using the French vanilla coffee, I'm just going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla to my milk. So you might put that in there that if you, if you want to just use regular coffee instead of the French vanilla, you can just add your vanilla to the milk. And then you're going to bring this up to a boil. Come on. Okay. What? Yeah, well, I, I did this in the, instead of using the French vanilla coffee, I'm putting a teaspoon, yes, so you're adding an extra teaspoon so that the coffee is flavored, vanilla flavored, all right? Does that make sense? You're still going to put the half teaspoon in the mousse mixture, but I'm just, I'm making French vanilla flavored coffee here is what I'm doing, all right? So you might just want to say to add a teaspoon of the vanilla. You want to bring it up to a boil, doesn't take long, and then you just set this off. Well, actually my induction burner turns off, so I've just got that turned off. And now I'm going to put my chocolate chips in a bowl. Caleb, do you have that strainer over there, that little sieve that we did the powdered sucanat with? And a cup and a half is one bag of our Enjoy Life gluten-free chocolate chips. So I do that. And then it also calls for the milk chocolate. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, as soon as I get my little strainer, all you're going to do is you're going to strain your coffee or your hot milk over the chocolate chips, and that's how you're going to melt your chocolate chips. Okay. All right, so now all I'm going to do is stir this until my chocolate chips are melted. Ashley, you want to come clear this out and bring me the assistant up here? Thank you. 
And just keep stirring it until the chocolate chips are no longer lumpy. They're nice and smooth and creamy. You can serve it whenever, whenever you want. Um, let's get the pudding out of the way and then we'll serve the turkey while I go over the, um, the directions for the substitutions and the recipes that were submitted. I'm sorry, I'm a little behind. How many of y'all been here before? <laughs> And I thought I really wasn't doing that many recipes tonight. I always think that, don't I? Uh-huh. Okay, so this is our assistant. Would you mind putting that? Don't, what? Not saying anything. Turned on its side. I'm going to use the blender to powder my sucanot. This is what you want to use if you have a recipe that calls for powdered sugar. This is all you have to do is put the honey granules in a blender. You can use the Tribest if you're doing a small amount, or even if you're doing a big amount, you may just have to do smaller batches. Um, I use either my blender attachment to the assistant. The mega blender that we sell will do even more at a time. So I'm just gonna powder. See how now it's getting finer? Okay, so there's, there's my powdered sugar, if you have a recipe that calls for powdered sugar. I use this for icings. Um, I make any kind of buttercream frosting. I pipe it. Yes, it's a little powdery. So um, it's not going to feel like your 10x powdered sugar, but it will make icing just fine. You might have to whip your icing, let it sit for just a, you know, a few minutes and come back and whip it again because the honey granules don't dissolve as good as your powdered sugar will. So just let them sit and then go back and do it again. Um, now I'm gonna whip my whipping cream. The secret to whipping whipping cream and the secret to mousse is to get a good whip on your whipping cream. You want a clean utensil. If there's stuff in, in here, you won't get as good a whip. You don't want a hot bowl. So if you, if you have a metal whipping bowl, make sure it's not right out of the dishwasher or you didn't wash it and dry it and it's still warm. You want a cold bowl. If you have a metal bowl, if you even put it in the refrigerator or the freezer and let it chill, um, it'll whip the whipping cream even better. Whipping cream should double in size when you whip it. This is the double whisk whipping bowl that goes to the kitchen assistant. So I'm just gonna whip my whipping cream. It'll, it'll do two cups very nicely. And so now this is, um, so I'm going to do it on high speed. You should have seen Sharon whipping all this whipping cream today, or yesterday. I'm gonna do it on high speed until soft peaks form, and then I'm going to add my honey granules gradually and my vanilla. So this is where my half teaspoon of vanilla goes in the cream. So you want it, you see it's still kind of liquidy, but it'll start taking some shape. And just when it takes a soft shape, like there, see how it's, it's got some shape, it's not just liquid. I'm gonna put my vanilla in. Okay, and then I'm gonna gradually, I'm gonna turn the speed down just a little bit here to kind of medium, medium low. Because you don't, if you whip it too much, it'll turn into butter, okay? So then I just add my, my sugar, my honey granules, my powdered honey granules. Woo! Hang on just a minute. Okay, so go ahead and turn it up a little bit. And now you want to whip it until stiff peaks form. And that looks really good. And like I said, if you whip it too far, it'll turn into butter. So um, now, and answer, ask your question again, I couldn't hear you. Uh, absolutely. A absolutely. You can even do butter in a blender. Yeah, you just take it further and it'll, you'll see it, all of a sudden it'll clump up and the liquids will come off and that's your buttermilk and then you just strain out your clumps and that's your sweet cream butter, okay? So there's my, my cream. 
great gift idea. Switch it. Everyone that ever has gotten one loves it and usually comes back and buys more. So um, Ashley's going to have a drawing for a switch it. So now all we're going to do, see how nice and creamy and shiny our chocolate chips are? $4.81. All right. There you okay. go. So we're going to take our cream and we're just going to put it in our, cho in our chocolate mixture. And it doesn't matter that the chocolate is still warm. You don't, it did not say to let it cool. And it doesn't matter here. Now you've got to chill the mousse before you serve it. So that's why I made it yesterday. And you, you used uh, coffee in that mousse, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. I have some of our Jim's Organic Coffee for number 497. And then you just fold Four, in the nine, cream. Seven. And this is sweet love. This is my husband's favorite. <laughs> okay, so you just keep stirring this in until you get all that cream incorporated. You don't want to beat it because you don't want to break everything down. You just want to keep folding it in, folding it in. Ashley, would you go look in that back freezer and you'll find the little chocolate cups that we Yes, make. I will. I'm going to also uh, give away a little baggie of one of our new flavors of tea. It's cranberry um, to 472. 472. There you go. And I'll go get your cups. All righty. It real, this is very rich dessert. I don't know if you, I mean, that's almost enough. Maybe a little more than that little mousse cup that, or the little cup that we gave you. You could probably do a little more than that. But um, it's very rich. It doesn't take, take much. In fact, the other night I just was tired and I just wanted something sweet. And I had some, uh, actually, from uh, where I had tested the recipe, and um, I had it in a Ziploc bag where we had piped it. And I just went in the refrigerator and I just squirted just a little bit in a spoon and just ate it. And it was like, that was just enough. That was, I was done. It was okay. In fact, a, a whole cup of it is kind of a lot. So now we want to cover it. And it actually darkens back kind of dark after you chill it. If I was Paula Dean, I'd lick this thing. <laughs> I'm Sue, I might lick it. I'll, I'll save it over here for later. All right, so now we just, you just want to cover it with some saran, you know, or some, some wrap, and then chill it in the refrigerator. All right, and so I put some of what we made earlier in a little baggie. I'm going to pipe some. I'll show you how I would serve it. That's how we got it in those little cups. We piped it. But Caleb, I, I really wanted him to try this, and I knew he would be the one that would, would do this tedious task. I think this is a very cool idea of a way to serve the mousse. And all we did was we melted a bag of chocolate chips, and we painted it, or he, he, I'm surprised he hasn't said we. He painted it into the silicone cups. The silicone cups were the only ones that worked for this. The paper ones, we couldn't get the paper peeled off. Um, I think they sell mousse molds, but these worked, worked very well. And what he did was he just, like I said, he melted the chocolate chips in a, in a double boiler. So you want them to stay liquid without just bubbling and getting too hot. So you just want them to stay warm. He took one of the little pastry brushes that we sell, and I can't... Oh, he did. He put these in the freezer first. Then he dipped his brush in, and he got like two swipes with each dip, okay, and then just painted it on, and then he put just a little pool in the bottom and then painted that. I've seen where it says to put your pool of chocolate in the bottom and then just brush it up from there, but he wanted to make sure he had a nice bottom on this. And then now what I found, the trick to getting these off, is to kind of peel this back. Well, then you need to put them, of course, in the refrigerator or freezer to freeze. But you kind of get this peeled back, and you almost, you got to get the whole thing kind of turning inside out, and then it'll just pop out. And now, 
to serve this and you oh, okay I cracked that one you just want to be careful here that you don't get too carried away you just have to kind of kind of turn this inside out and it's better if you kind of push up from the bottom and this would be like a serious labor of love for someone okay I'm, I'm, that one's not working because I'm trying to do it in a hurry all right let's cut And then we're just going to pipe our mousse. I kind of cut that too big. And Caleb put, used a, a piping bag with a star tip. And now you can just eat your whole little thing there. Do what? I have not, but I think you certainly could. Um, which I'm glad you brought that up. There are some recipes that don't double very well, like the lemon curd is one of them. I meant to tell you that. So we had to make the individual recipes of lemon curd. It just, I don't know why. Maybe Judith, do you know why a lemon curd doesn't double very well? Because I tried a double recipe once and it just would never thicken. And, um, I, maybe so. Maybe that's what it is. Oop. That would be my guess. Maybe. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, Ashley. All right, I just kind of threw off that whole presentation. How about I just change that up to my pretty little Christmas poinsettia plate. We're going to do it here and a little raspberry on top and a little mint there. Now that I just broke that one off. All right, y'all stop laughing at me. I'm trying, okay? I am making it pretty. We're just going to cover that up. Here. Okay? A little chocolate mousse. <laughs> you can have this. I'm talking to him. And he's like, okay. I'm giving him a bad time. Okay. So there's our chocolate mousse. Y'all can have these. You want these? With a rat here. You want a raspberry? There we go. I want my. While she's doing that, I am going to um, raffle off um, our small size of the agave syrup. If, if you have not used this in your cooking or your tea, it is just a wonderful sweetener. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. 516. All right, here's my mousses. Abby? Twist your arm. What you get? Just whoever wants them. <laughs> and here's one here too. All right. Okay. We had a fun night, didn't we? Okay. Um, I promised you that I would um, convert some recipes for you, and I did. Um, I tell you what, I need to show you the uh, chicken in the smoker real quick. I know, but I'll at least show them. kind of clear out my my area here give me some space yes it's not magnetic even though it's stainless steel I don't know why it's not magnetic yeah oh I know yeah it that's what it is. You're right. It is magnetic, but it extends over the 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 the, the surface. <laughs> yeah, it extends over the surface. That's what it is. I knew there was a reason why it it kind of funked it up. You know. But there's our chicken, and this is incredible in fajitas. Leftover barbecue pizza, barbecue pineapple pizza. So serve it for dinner. Go ahead and smoke a lot when you're smoking. Um, that didn't sound very good. But anyway, um, I mean, if you're going to smoke, smoke a lot. So anyway, because I love having it left over. You throw it in an omelet. Uh, it's just fabulous. Wings, hot wings in here. 
Oh my goodness, just amazing, just amazing. You're gonna love the stovetop smoker. All right, what about the hummus and the I gunshot. Have, that's what we're fixing to do, okay? okay? So we're now gonna go through your recipes that are left and we're just gonna talk you through them. Ashley's sitting down, she's tired. All right, so we've done the scones, we've done the mousse, we've done the crates, we've done the millet. Queen of the South chicken salad from Judith's book, the shamrock and peach. Um, that used dry apricots as the, um, as the sweetener. And these are our organic dried apricots. Now don't be blown away that they look ugly. They have no sulfur dioxide, no chemicals to keep that color. They're organic, they're naturally dried. They're delicious, they still taste delicious. So that's what I used in the um, salad. I did put the recipe here. Um, since I was using it in the class, I encourage you to get her book. You will love it. Um, I did use the curry powder that we sell. We now have a whole line of spices. If you would like to smell some of these spices, um, I've got all kinds up here. It's like a whole experience. You will not believe the difference in these spices and what you get in the store. They are just so fresh and so wonderful. The ginger smells just like you just grated ginger. It's really, really amazing. Great gift idea would be to take some of the dry nuts and the trail mix, the chocolate covered raisins, make a little basket, great stocking stuffers instead of using all that candy. Get some of these nice um, organic uh, trail mixes and nuts and and chocolates and all kinds of wonderful things. Um, the buffalo wing hummus. Did y'all like the buffalo wing hummus? I, my, a couple of my employees went, I don't, I don't like hummus. And Kayla was like, come on, just taste it, just taste it. And they're like, no, I don't like hummus. And she tastes it, she goes, okay, I could eat that. You know, hummus is such a nice change of pace for a dip. I love the sour cream and mayonnaise and with our dip mixes, I mean, those are some, can be some nice healthy um, dips. And I encourage you to go get you, pick you some dip mixes up. The recipes are on the back. But hummus is just, it's just a, a nice change of pace. It's chickpeas. You can use canned chickpeas if you want. But oh my goodness, they cook in 10 minutes in the pressure cooker. And they're ready. And you've got them. And they keep for a week in the refrigerator. So go on and cook you a pot. And then you can use the, the chickpeas in your hummus. There's all kinds of things you can do with the hummus and make different flavors. And we um, just kind of got this idea for this buffalo wing um, hummus. So what we used was barbecue sauce and gunshot sauce. This is a new sauce that we carry. It's basically a vinegar base, um, kind of like a, a spicy sauce. It's, it's kind of a hot sauce, kind of in between a hot sauce and a barbecue sauce. And it tastes like A1 and Heinz mixed together. Mixed together, yes. So it's a great sauce to like dip your meat in to serve on the table. Caleb and I have fallen in love with it. Put a shot of it in your scrambled eggs. I've got some egg lovers, not a lot where you just take, but it's just, I've got some kids that like eggs and I've got some that don't. And one morning I put the smoked chicken in there and a little shot of the hot sauce of the gunshot sauce and well I've done it even without the chicken just a little dash and then whip your eggs up and, and one of them said what did you do different with the eggs they taste different it wasn't enough that you just tasted this gunshot sauce but it it just spiked it up just a little bit um, deviled eggs put it in the the mixture that you put in the eggs just great it's a great marinade for steaks a rub um, a sauce that you can put on the table. So this is our gunshot sauce. We actually get this from um, one of our co-op coordinators in, in Florida. So um, great, great And I've got two sauce. to give away, one to number 493. These are little trial size, great stocking stuffer or put in a gift basket, little trial sizes. They're like $1.49 for the little trial size yeah. or something like that. 493. Chickpeas Ooh. are highest, they're excellent source of molybdenum which a molybdenum is a very critical mineral that we have a hard time um, getting. It's, it's, it's very necessary for your carbohydrate metabolism, for breaking down those carbohydrates and getting your energies. It's also an excellent source for manganese, which is another mineral that we have a hard time getting. Um, research studies do, done have shown people that are low in manganese usually develop joint stiffness and that kind of thing. So manganese is a mineral that, that we sometimes have a hard time getting. Fiber, chickpeas, beans, legumes are loaded with insoluble fiber. So why not serve a dip 
that's got lots of fiber in it instead of the heavier, creamy, you know, things that you buy. B17, what did I say B17? Laetrile, high in chickpeas. Millet, chickpeas, flaxseed, those are high sources of, of your B17. So that's our chickpeas. Okay, y'all ready for the pumpkin pie crunch? Um, you just, you can either use can or you can cook them an hour or whatever. I don't know. I don't remember now. It's been so long since I didn't cook beans in a pressure cooker. Um, I don't know how you live without one, but I can't remember. I'd have to go look at cooking charts. You can find. It's a, probably an hour because they, chickpeas are one of the faster cooking legumes. I've got so, one more gunshot sauce okay. for number 542. 542. Going once. Five, four, two. Is that you? All right. Okay. The pumpkin pie crunch that you had that everybody seemed to love. It was the original recipe is I went on and printed, wrote it out, but I put my substitutions in um, bold and in parentheses. Evaporated milk, you can substitute half and half, light cream or heavy cream. It doesn't matter. You can substitute that. Um, I think one even said you could substitute milk for it. So you don't have to have that canned evaporated milk. Anytime you see sugar in a recipe, white sugar, you can substitute honey granules. One for one. There's no guessing. You just do it. Um, brown sugar, Sucanot or molasses granules, one for one. So that was easy. The yellow package cake mix. Okay, I tried this recipe twice. Um, I have an easy one egg cake and I just took the dry ingredients and tried that, but it didn't quite work. And so I got a cake mix and looked at the ingredients and found that there is some fat in the cake mix. Even though you put oil and eggs and everything, there is some hydrogenated oil. So you really don't want to use, besides white flour, white sugar, it's hydrogenated oil. So I cut in a little butter into my dry mix. Not as much as I, the whole recipe called for, but about half of what that recipe called for. So this is a perfect substitution for a box cake mix. And this is the equivalent of one box cake mix, okay? And um, if you want to make the cake, I did put the directions for what you would do, what you would add to just make a yellow cake. Um, also, in our holiday recipe book, the yummy chocolate cake in the 2007 issue on page 64 is a wonderful box cake texture recipe, the finished product. Now you'd have to, if you're needing a cake, you wouldn't use it for your dry cake mix, but you, if you just need the cake. And the cool thing about it is it has no dairy. It uses mayonnaise as, as the oil. And Ashley has used it for years now. It tastes like a box chocolate cake does. It's that texture and flavor. She leaves out the cocoa to make a yellow cake. So that's an easy, easy cake if you want the no dairy um, issue going on there. But this is great to have um, the, the, the dry cakes mix substitute. Um, so that worked there. The instant pudding substitute, I got to show you all this. I had to buy this. I, that was hard because this is chemicals in a box. Okay, I want to read you the ingredients. The first ingredient is sugar. The second ingredient is dextrose. Anything that ends in O's is sugar. All right, so and it comes from corn. The third ingredient is modified cornstarch. So that's your cornstarch, which you can use. Well, we'll get there in a minute. Okay, the rest of it. Artificial flavor, salt, sodium, disodium phosphate, tetrasodium phosphate, pyrophosphate, and diglycerides, and yellow 5 and yellow 6, and artificial color and BHA. That's what you're giving your kids, or you, or whatever. Okay? So sugar and sugar and cornstarch. Why do you need the rest of the stuff? So I, I did some research and found that um, one recipe for... Uh, instant pudding substitute was just the sugar and the cornstarch and I don't know why that wouldn't work but I actually opted to use um, the second one which has your non-fat dry milk powder your cornstarch and your um, honey granules and your salt and um, actually I didn't put the vanilla beans in here because I didn't have them the one recipe said to chop up your vanilla to scrape out your beans and chop your pot up in pieces and just kind of put it in the container 
um, with it, and that would give it, that would infuse it with the vanilla flavor. I think you can just put vanilla flavoring in whatever you're using it for. So that worked. Um, we did the um, angel food cake that had the dry pudding mix. You know, we can all make pudding from scratch, but we all have grandma's got a cake there somewhere that uses a box mix and a box of pudding. So now you can do that, all right? Easy, easy. Um, pecan pie without corn syrup. This was a recipe someone asked, could I convert it? I did this pie in my Thanksgiving class. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Miss Lane Pritchett sent us a brownie bottom cheesecake. Lane, all I did was um, make the brownies from the Bread Becker's cookbook. And instead of putting it in a, uh, what do you call that kind of pan? A long pan? <laughs> Rectangular pan, yeah. Instead of putting it in that, you can tell I'm getting tired. Um, just put it in your springform pan and bake it completely. So all you need to do is just the one recipe of brownies that's in my cookbook. I can't remember what page. And then you make your cheesecake. Cheesecake, simple. Cream cheese, usually sugar, eggs, vanilla, sour cream. Sugar, anytime you have sugar, one for one honey granules, white sugar. Okay, I would not use molasses granules or sucanot there. It's going to make it taste like molasses. Okay, angel food cake roll. Did, is someone here that sent this in? Is the per Okay, well, I did it, or I had someone do it for me, actually. And we did it, but we just had to make the angel food cake by, from scratch. So here's the angel food cake roll. And it really worked out very well. So I put the scratch recipe for angel food cake. Yes, it has 12 egg whites. What you're going to do with all those egg yolks, maybe make eggnog or something. I don't know, but that's a lot of egg yolks left over. But here's our um, angel food cake roll. And see, this has in the filling, it calls for strawberry yogurt and the instant pudding. And that we used the instant pudding, and it worked just fine the, that we made, not that chemical stuff, okay? So the instant pudding that we made. So that's the angel food cake. I was just not going to do that for 110 people. Sorry, guys. I love y'all, but not that much. No, I'm not just kidding. Just kidding. Um, the carrot cake recipe, um, really, 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 in your um, Wiser Choice substitution that you should have gotten when you came in, the additional handout that we gave you, self-rising flour is nothing more than flour with the salt, soda, and baking powder already in there. bisquick has got your butter cut in. Okay, so you can easily make those substitutions. And um, then your cream cheese, your powdered sugar. I already showed you how to powder your sugar, your honey granules, all right? And you can just use that one for one for your powdered sugar. So um, that's our uh, recipes. Any other questions on substitutions? Yes, ma'am. Um, um, uh, you just put some cocoa in there. I can't remember uh email email me i think it was like um i want to say like three tablespoons of cocoa but i can't remember if you'll email they'll send it to me because i've got it at home and i just i forgot to put that in there for the chocolate pudding all right um any other questions as far as um recipe substitutions anything that stumps you um oh sorry huh Uh huh. Okay. Sh sh okay. Good idea. Coconut oil instead of the olive oil in the carrot cake. Anytime you have a liquid vegetable oil, you can use olive oil or you can use the coconut oil. Okay. The coconut oil has a very low melting point. You can use the coconut oil when you have a, a hard need a hard oil. You can use butter, but if you're trying to go non-dairy, the um, coconut oil works very well. Cookies, cookies, brown sugar. Sucanot, white sugar, honey granules, soft wheat for your flour. If it doesn't have yeast and you want a cookie cake, you're typically going to use soft wheat. Um, you just need to increase the flour by about a quarter cup per cup. So if the cake calls for two or the cookies call for two cups of flour, you're going to use two and a half cups of your soft wheat flour. All right? Yes. The pa no, I've not found, her question was, does the packed brown sugar make a difference? No. When it's called for packed brown sugar, I just scoop the sucanot out. Same thing. I know, it seems like it wouldn't work because the, the brown sugar has a moistness, but it does. I've never had it not work. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. 
You know, I have not put those in there, but that's a good question. You're right. I mean, it seems to work better with the with the stouter one. I don't know how you would get that that limper one in there. I, I don't know. That's a good question. Now I'm gonna try it. I'll figure it out. So, um, but yeah, these these work very nicely. Um, Gift ideas, we have tons and tons and tons of gift ideas. Do your shopping with us. We love you. Okay, okay. Um, check out the table, the sweet and easy popcorn maker with the popcorn bowl and a two pound bag of popcorn. Um, new waffle makers, the, the sparkler, the stovetop stuffer. All these things are some great ideas. Let me, uh, another little, let me give you, let me show you this real quick. Dip bowls. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Um, these are fabulous. This is great for, um, a, I mean, it doesn't have to just be an older person, but I thought of immediately someone like with arthritis that just has a hard time gripping a brush to scrub like potatoes and carrots and things like that. These are vegetable scrubbers, and you just put them, put them on. Let, let me get mine for you. You just put them on, and it's like washing the potato, like washing your hands. So you just you have your potatoes, and you just wash or you scrub like this. So you're not having to grip that brush. So this is a great idea. We have them in orange, green, and brown, and then we even have kid size, so you can let the kids help you scrub potatoes. So if you've got a budding cook on hand, um, why not put something like that? in your stocking. And I've actually got a set to give away to number 557. 557. Five, there we right go. There. Brad teases me about the cozy and says that it's replaced him. Oh, lunch. Whoops. I'm, maybe, can you go get the one that's already out of the box? I do not want to take this one out. This is a neck wrap with a high neck on it, and it's filled with flaxseed. You put it in the microwave, it heats up. Put it in for about three minutes, it's warm, and then you just wrap it around your neck. Wonderful stress reliever. It is filled with herbs that actually do help relieve stress, like some lavender and things like that, but it's not overwhelmingly lavender. You don't just, because I'm not a lavender fan. If you are, that's great, but I'm not. But it does have some lavender in it, it does have some other herbs. They heat up. This is the way I start just about every day. I put my water on the boil. I put this in the microwave. When my water's boiling, I steep my tea in my teacup. And then this is ready. I strain my tea, and then I go sit down with my Bible and my blankie, and I am just like, wow. Couldn't get much better than this. So this is a great, great gift. For someone, uh, especially that just is cold all the time. I use mine two or three times a day in the winter. Um, I heat it up in the morning if I have a particularly long, quiet time. Um, you got it? Um, I don't know how you would heat no. it without a microwave. We've I, tried. We, yeah, I don't think you can put it in. Yeah, I know. So if you don't have a microwave, I don't know what to tell you. How to heat the neck wrap outside of the microwave. Um, yeah, I mean, they at the show, they were using a crock pot, but, I mean, you, you have to have it warm before you put it in the crock pot. And then we burned And I think like, they were doing that just to keep them warm. Keep them warm, yes. While that's people all they were, were coming doing, up. So. But I have one for number 488. Oh, oh wow! Yes. Um, the dip server with some dip mixes make a great um, basket. Oh, let me show you one last thing. These are brand new. I fell in love with these. They're a little expensive um, for salt and pepper shakers, but I fell in love with the company. They're actually made in the USA by the largest drumstick manufacturer in the world. They make drumsticks. Now think about it. I'm like, how did they get the salt shakers? They have to know how to dry the wood so that the wood won't split and crack. So they, they turn these. They're all made in this country. They have a lifetime warranty. They're the only um, salt shaker that has a two-stage, um, or they have a two-stage mechanism, and they're the only one that you can totally break apart when you're filling it, and also when you screw it down, it locks down. So when you're turning it, it doesn't con 
unscrew on you and get looser and looser. So um, they retail, I think, for $30 a piece. For And there is salt ones. Like this one, the S on top is the salt. And the if it doesn't have an S, then it's for pepper. I just love them. I think they look like chess pieces, and I just think they make a beautiful, beautiful gift. They are a little expensive, but they, they're, they're very, very nice. Um, very nice people to deal with. Um, anyway, so, pardon me? Oh, yes, the real salt, the, yes, the coarse salt. I've, that's what I've got here in mind. And it uh, just does a, just a fabulous job. We only have a few of them. Um, this is my salt and pepper shaker here. We only have about five or six. I just wanted to kind of see how they would go. I mean, I can get some more if you want one before Christmas. Um, I can get some more in. It doesn't take that long. But because of the price, I just wanted to see, you know, I, they're just beautiful, though, and they have a lifetime warranty. So, um, we do have a few out there. You can take, I need to take these back out there because, like I said, these are one of the five or six that we have. So um, that's the Vic, they're Vic Firth um, salt and pepper shakers. Another great idea um, is the little paper Whoops, we sell them individually, the little paper um, loaf pans. You can bake right in these. They're oven proof. And then that way you can keep leave your bread, your um, pumpkin bread or banana bread, the more fragile breads that kind of fall apart. You can leave them right in there and bag them or wrap them and give them as gifts. Okay? Here. Do we have one more raffle? I've got several. Actually. Okay, go ahead and raffle those things right. off. 541. 541. Oh, yay! And then 479. Okay. Um, are we going to pass out? <laughs> no. Yes. Um, I tell you what, I will. Yes, you have a question? I do have a question. I have a recipe for peanut butter balls, butter balls. Oh, yes, yes. And I, I um, like same as I'm going to ask you for bread for tea and I'm going to Yeah, you can just use the chocolate chips. Will they harden the chocolate? That's what I made the little. That's what he made. The just the stuff. chocolate chips. Yep, really you don't need paraffin. And I let one sit out for, you know, a day and a half. Okay. It did fine. It did six dollars. Okay. Yeah, and I wanted to show you all a basket that my sister in law, Amanda, and I put together. There are a lot of people that are realizing that they have gluten allergies and are celiacs, and we have several products now. Um, that are completely gluten-free. The, um, the peanut butter cups that we gave away earlier are both considered gluten-free. We have some already baked cookies, um, as well as um, this is a hazelnut spread, which I didn't see any on the shelf. I wonder if this is the last one in the house. Um, this is very similar to Nutella. So if you have someone who really likes that, that's a much healthier version. So that would be a great uh, gift basket idea. And I actually have a box of the ginger snaps for um, number 473. For the gluten-free person, these are the best gluten-free cookies I've ever tasted. In fact, the ginger snaps and the snickerdoodles are some of the best cookies I've ever tasted. They're really, really nice. Guess what flour? Garbanzo bean flour. Okay. Um, how, how far along are y'all in plating the meat? They're Are serving you serving it? it? Oh, okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? I have five more things to give away. Okay. But I've already got the tag, so I'm okay. going to give them really fast. Okay. Um, these are a great, we have several different flavors of mints. Um, so if you're trying to get away from the yucky, the yucky mints, these are really good. Um, and I have a set of the peppermint for 532. Mm hmm. And then hey, mom talked Can about the trail mixes the um, that we now Can carry as meat? well. And I have a set for 505. 505. And then one for 513. 513. Remember, Yay. the trail mixes and all the dried fruits and things are all organic. It's all organic. Um, last call for raffle ticket for me and Caleb, buying me and Caleb for a, for a day or whatever. Um, so we're going to do that. And then I have, um, these are two of um, the different style lunch boxes that we um, carry. These are absolutely wonderful. Um, and I've got this red with white polka dots for 492. 
four nine two. Your pregnant daughter that didn't get to go. All right. Oh, well, there you those go. Those are great. My kids have those, and they're just nice because the top just rolls down. It's just enough to put a drink, a, a sandwich, and a bag of chips or whatever. They're and just if you would great. like to, we've got several that have several. Monogra that are monogrammed with initials out there. If you'd like to, yeah, and it out. we've got some other colors. Yes, too. we do. We even have. Um, Camouflage ones for the boys, if you want a camouflage yes. one. And then I have one that's a little bit bigger for 462. Oh, that's me. That's I heard you. that. And you can also swap it out if you would like. There you go. All right, that's all my goodies. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the class tonight. I'm sorry I ran over as usual, but most of y'all know that it's going to happen. You just told your husbands, I'm running late tonight. Um, do not leave yet. I've got I've got a gift for each one of you here. Um, I've always said that I should give a prize to everyone that makes it through one of my classes because they're so long. You sit here forever. You don't go to the bathroom. Don't give you anything to drink. I do feed you. I do feed you. So, um, but I just wanted to just continue with the thought that I left you with um, in the beginning. Don't forget, Abby's here. Um, if you want to check out her makeup, do we want to do that before I close? Let's do the drawing. Yeah. All right? You going to draw it? Is everybody good? Anybody else want to buy a raffle ticket? All right. Four, two, four. Who's 424? Four, four? All right. Oh! She's here enough. She deserves lunch. Very good. All right, we'll, um, we'll be in touch after the first of the year. We'll set a date that, you know, works for whatever, all right? Okay, all right. Um, and if y'all want to be invited to that dinner of six, talk to her and be really friendly with her, bribe her or something. Um, yeah, we'll see. But um, in closing, I just wanted to share a few, few last words. I want to go back to the verse in Romans. Um, and look at that just a little bit, Romans 12, 13. It says, contribute to the needs of God's people, sharing in the necessities of the saints, pursue the practice of hospitality. Some versions say practice, but the word pursue really means to go after, to seek this out. And it implies a little more than let's have a party. And remember... Hospitality means to reach out to strangers. So there's really two commands here in this verse. It's saying, contribute to the needs of God's people. So fellowship with your friends, yes, be hospitable. Look out for the needs of those that you fellowship with and, and your brothers and sisters. But it says, pursue seeking out strangers, reaching out to strangers. You're supposed to be pursuing that. So... Um, that's the thought I want to leave you with today. I absolutely love Christmas. Um, not just because of what it is. In fact, I hate some of the things that it has become. But there are several things. Where in the world, what other time of the year can you stand in Walmart and hear, Oh, Holy Night? Or hear, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. You hear the world, and I'm... I'm I, I take it like Paul, you know, when he was in prison one time, he says these people were preaching the gospel just for wrong motives. He goes, but you know what? Whether for false motives or true, the gospel is being preached. And so that's one of the reasons. But the other reason is I feel like um, if you're not an evangelist, have you ever met an evangelist? I don't know how they think like they think, but they can just all of a sudden get you to a place where they can just witness to you, where they can tell you about the Lord. I don't think that way, and, and they think way outside the box. But for me, I think what Christmas season does, it kind of gives those of us that are a little more timid and shy, it opens a door and a window of opportunity for us to share our love and our, the love of Christ with other people. It gives us an excuse to take a loaf of bread um, to our neighbor. So, um, Mark, if I could get you to hand me one of those bags, I would really appreciate it. So... I told you that I wanted to encourage you to fall in love with your kitchen, to think of your kitchen as a mission field. Most of you here, I know there's some newcomers, but most of you here know how to make bread. 
you make muffins. Why not make a batch of muffins? That was one batch of muffins. I don't know where my pan is. It's the little eight loaf pan that's all in one pan. When you make a batch of muffins, why not make a two? Wrap those up and share them with somebody. Keep it in your, you know, well, don't keep it in your car forever. But, you know, when you make a batch of muffins and you're going out, take them with you and ask God to show you someone. Maybe it's the checkout lady at Publix. Maybe it's a man walking down the street. I'll never, I'm not kidding. One day I saw a guy. He obviously was down and out. And um, I've seen him walking up and down the street. And I really, I honestly, I thought if I had a loaf of bread, I would just roll down the window, maybe throw it to him if I was scared. But um, you know what I'm saying? I would share that bread with him. All of you make bread. Why not make an extra loaf and just take it and see what God will do? Remember what the stories that we read in the beginning? Share your bread. Share your food. Share your kitchen. Share your love of Christ with other people and expect miracles to come. And that's not why we do it. I'm not doing that whole, you know, I'm just saying, I believe that we're coming into a time where we are, it's, it's just critical. Um, people are sick physically, and I think this bread is the answer to a lot of those issues, or whole grains are the answer to a lot of those issues. Um, and then people are sick spiritually. They're lost and they're searching. And um, I've just had several opportunities lately to really love people that are unlovable, um, people that are, usually I go, oh, they're weird, they're freaky, they're new agey, I don't want to have anything to do with them. God told me no. He stopped me short and said, you are going to love this person. You are going to reach out. You're going to fellowship. Now, you have to be careful and you have to be strong. You have to be wise. But I think God is bringing us to that. So um, I want to encourage you to reach out beyond yourself. Be out beyond your circle of friends and start looking and praying for strangers that you can reach out to. In 2008, December, what's down? It's been three years. I'm going to cry a little bit here. <laughs> My daughter Ashley sought out a stranger. He was a boy from, that we had never met from a country we had never heard of, the country of Latvia. We didn't even know where it was. And she hosted him through a ministry called New Horizons for Children to come and spend Christmas with her family in 2008. In October of 2009, that young man became our son. Brad and I adopted him. And in August of 2010, he received Jesus Christ as his Savior. There's no, <laughs> there's no exchange for that. And... Um, Never in my wildest dreams did I ever consider adopting a child. I had seven biological on my own. But God put a burden in our heart. We met this boy, and he's our son. We ended up meeting another boy in the process, and now he's our son. He was already born again, but, um, and he designed this flyer, that son. But in Matthew um, 15, when we read of the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, after the crowds began to follow Jesus, John 6, 26 says that Jesus answered them and he said, I assure you, I most solemnly tell you, you have been searching for me, not because you saw the miracles and signs, but because you were fed the loaves and you were filled and you were satisfied. Feed the hungry and it will open the door to share the gospel with them. Um, I want to look at Hebrews 13, 13. I'm sorry, Hebrews 13, 1 through 3. Real quick, I know it's late, and I'm going to let you go in just a minute. Sorry, I got a little choked up there. I love my son, Ryman's, who's playing car duty tonight, hauling my daughter to dance and his other brother to um, drama practice. Hebrews 13, 1 through 3 says, Let love for your fellow believers, there's that again, continue and be a fixed practice practice with you. Never let it fail. Do not forget or neglect or refuse to extend hospitality to strangers. Um, for through it, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as if you were their fellow prisoner. See, what do we tend to do? Idiot. You know, whatever, you know. But And those who are ill-treated since you also are liable to bodily suffering. And then Matthew 25, 34 through 40. 
And this is the last thing I want to share. And what I want to encourage you to do is just look around you. You don't have to go to another country to find a stranger. They're all around you. Share your bread. Like I said earlier, make some extra muffins. Um, think about it. Just what can you share? What can you give? Um, gift bags. Uh, make it easy to take a gift to someone. Matthew 25, 34 through 40 says this. The king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you blessed and favored of the God. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you brought me together with yourselves, and welcomed and entertained and lodged me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me with help and ministering care. I was in prison, and you came to see me. Then the just and the upright will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and give you something to drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome and entertain you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to visit you? And the king will reply to them, Truly I tell you, in as far as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. So the gift that I have for each of you tonight, I'm going to make it easy for you to reach out to a stranger tomorrow. All right? We've got a gift bag for each person that here is here tonight. In the gift bag, Sharon did such a great job of wrapping it, is a loaf of bread, okay? And in it is a free CD. So if the person's sick and you want them to hear this message. And then the gospel track. It's what? Wrapped in the paper. What? Well, this one must not have it in it. Oh, no, there it is. And the gospel track. Okay? So I want you to look for someone to give this to. So we have these bags. Um, we'll give each one of you. Make sure you pick up a bag um, as you leave. And uh, I just want to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas. Share your bread. And the, um, we're going to uh, kind of launch this campaign, the Real Bread Outreach and the Bread Beckers, and we're calling it Spread the Bread. So I want you to spread the bread, the real Jesus and the real bread. So enjoy. I hope you enjoyed your class. I hope you love your smoked turkey. And um, may you and your family have a very, very wonderful Christmas. Good night.